Ryan and the one and only Chirk Berserk get together to discuss a wide variety of topics across the sports world. During these discussions, we let our opinions fly with a dash of comedy. And now, here's your show. So, what's the catch? Welcome to this episode of uh, this episode, this day, it's Wednesday, whatever. It's so what's the catch time? It's Let's two o'clock. Do this. We're live from two to four on Wednesdays. Come listen, something or other, right, Chirk? Yep. <laughs> it's actually yep. a tragedy, man. This is actually our thirty fir- right, first episode. Thirty first. Thirty first. Hey, it's a special episode because it's our graduation week. Yes, we graduate this week. Yes. Congratulations, so. guys. Uh, yeah, congratulations to us. Uh, kudos yeah. to us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, made it. we rule. Yeah, I'm alumni already, so yeah. no big deal. So it was uh, Chirk Berserk over there in the box. Yeah, that's right, Chirk. I think we graduated together, didn't we? We were in the same... Uh, I think you guys were the same one. Yeah. Yeah, along with AJ. Yep. But uh, anyways, enough with the niceties, enough with the general uh, conversation. We're here to talk sports, here to talk Browns. Uh, let's see, we got one word reaction to Sunday's games that we have here. Yep. What is your one word, as your one word reaction? One word. I understand the assignment. <laughs> okay. I understand the assignment. <laughs> uh, it, I'll go ahead. Okay. Encouraging. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Chirk. Interview. Interview. Good word. <laughs> We're going to have to come back to that. That is a word. <laughs> All right. Expected. Mm. I, I expected that answer. Mm. All right. Josh. My one word, Where? Okay. We'll have to figure out which one that is. Jeez, um, uh, I'm so lost now with all those different words that mean nothing. We're, we're all, we're all <laughs> word here. I can explain my word after. <laughs> Every yeah. word means something. I, it, I, I said meh last week. Okay. I think I'm going to stick with meh for this okay. one. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Jerk, why interview? <sighs> the refs need to have an interview. I, I think at this point, we need... We need interviews with the refs. They need to be held accountable. Who? FBI? CIA? <laughs> Secret Service? Stone Phillips? <laughs> yeah, we need, we need an interview with J. Jonah Jameson. Press conferences. <laughs> so here, here's what I'll say. Is that were the refs bad? Yeah. Okay. But looking at the penalty disparity between the two teams, the Browns had one more penalty than the Chargers did. Mm-hmm. Okay. They were bad both Seven ways. Seven to six. They were bad both ways. Um, while the refs did have their fair share of bad, play co- or bad penalty calls, okay, and it seemed like they all went against the Browns' way, the Browns had their opportunities to still stop the Chargers, but they did They allowed three fourth down conversions. Right. Okay? The Chargers went three for three on fourth downs. The Chargers were just moving the ball with ease. Okay. Uh, I think I referred to the defense as Swiss cheese at one point. Yeah, the number that's more alarming is that they only had three third downs. <laughs> or fourth downs. Oh, okay. I was going to say, did that, they only get the third down three times? Uh, I don't remember Canadian it being that That leads, that leads yeah. me to why I came up. I should have said it more like this. Where? Like, as okay, it, question mark. Okay. okay. Yes. That would have been Be- nice. Some punctuation in a word. Yes. Punctuation matters. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. But I'm just like, where was the defense? Mm. That's what I mean. It's like. Okay. They were all injured. So, I mean, they they did a lot of them did get hurt. They were uh, all on the. Miles Garrett they were all the game in the tent. at one point. But I mean. Let's be honest here. Um, this was a correction that we should have all saw coming. They were playing way above what their actual skill level is, in my opinion, for the past couple weeks. This is the complete opposite end of the spectrum. I don't think they're this bad. I don't think they're as good as they, what they showed before. I think right in the middle is where they're going to end up being when it's all said and done at the end of the season. So here's my other thing. The past two weeks, they played the Vic- going into this Chargers game. Mm-hmm. They played the Vikings offense and the Bears offense. Mm-hmm. They're not the most high-powered offenses in the world. That's one way to put it. Yeah. And then in week one, they played the Chiefs defense. Or, I'm sorry. Played off- the Chiefs, yeah. Chiefs offense. You know what they I mean. played both the Chiefs offense and defense. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to figure out where you're going. So it's like, you pu- in week one, you played a high-powered offense. Mm-hmm. Week five, you played a high-powered offense. And then week two and three... It was in four. In four, thank you. Mm-hmm. You played meh offenses, so I'm not sure where this defense do you, is. Do you want to know what the common theme here is? You have an elite quarterback we faced in week one. We have an on his way to being an elite quarterback that we faced in week five. 
Okay, you have mm. guys that are head and shoulders above all the other quarterbacks that we played in the other games. It's like not even particularly close. And you have an elite quarterback coming to town this week. I disagree with that, but uh, we'll talk about that in the next segment, I guess. But what you have is you saw two quarterbacks, Mahomes and Herbert, slice up a defense that is still a work in progress, but they're elite and on the way to being elite for a reason. Mm. Okay, When we play Kirk Cousins, Tyrod Taylor, uh, Davis Mills, uh, shout out Mills Mafia, shout and, out uh, Justin Fields, who was a rookie making his first start. The dream yeah. AFC championship right there. The, Brown, the Browns defense is going to look good Okay, against those guys. It okay? didn't they're they're against, not exciting. It didn't against Houston. Until Davis Mills came in. Mm-hmm. Once Davis Mills came in, it was, it was easy. Yeah, it stunk. But, yeah, but you have to admit that until Tyrod Taylor got injured, we were on our way to losing that game. Oh, if Tyrod Taylor doesn't get hurt, we lose that game. A hundred percent. You think Coach we ever it. lost that game? Tyrod- yeah! They're, that's pointless to do. There's yeah. so many ifs and There's, shoulds. I'm with you there, Jeremy. If we hadn't got this penalty, yeah. we might have won. If we right. hadn't, I mean... Yeah, but that's fair. Well, I, well, my only thing is, if you are a Browns fan, I, I think you have to be at least a little bit encouraged to see the offense performed a little better. Yeah. I still think at the end of the day, the NFL does not like the Browns. Oh, stop that. Get stop out of here. That. The NFL hates every team, by yeah. that logic. <laughs> Wait. Okay. The NFL doesn't want the Browns to succeed. Hey, hey do you know where market. else they have that conversation? Big you know where else they have that conversation? They have that conversation in Detroit. Okay? They have that conversation the in New Orleans. They have that conversation in every team that hasn't won a Super Bowl either ever or in a long time or hasn't been successful or having a bad time. Right. Spot. Okay. Ooh. Every team in every has bad calls against the, them. The NFL hates the Falcons. The NFL hates the Dolphins. It's, it's a pointless conversation. I agree with you that the referees have been horrible, Cherk. I think the referees have been real bad all season. Uh, but I just think that that happens in every game almost. You that a bad call, at least one bad call happens in just about every game. What? It does. I mean, I oh. think every major sport should just have a press conference with the ref. For what? What would that accomplish, though? <laughs> That would accomplish accountability. You would How is having a press conference a, 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 a establish accountability? It, so it, just, the, it just has them saying, being, right. having a conversation. If you, if are, you want accountability, what you do is you actually hold them accountable. Then you either bump them down from where they are if they're not playing well enough, or you suspend them or move them mm-hmm. from a crew. Hold on. That's man. accountability. Hold Talking, on. that's nothing. Real no, quick, I want to play this out, though. So, so you, uh, here's, you want them to play the game, maybe, and then after the game, when they're doing like the coach and the the. QB post game interviews. Do you want him to do like a post game referee interview? Yes. Uh, okay. We'll see. Yeah, just have him up there. Have him up there with everybody else. Yes. I, I think the the best thing for the NFL referee refer, referee wise tough thing to say there. <laughs> Um, is when they're invisible, when we don't see them. And the idea of making them more visible and having a press conference and, and asking them questions through the media and things, it's like you're putting the highlight on the refs that are doing a terrible job. It's not good for the product in terms of what that right. NFL's Bingo. trying to do. A hundred percent. It's yeah. That's I why think it's not a real gonna... easy answer. It, uh, it really just comes down to you need more replays. Sure. It, it, yeah. that's, that's fair. More replays, more stuff under review. But the one thing I'll say about the referees is that – in terms of the Browns and the fact that they lost, control what you can control. You can't control the referees. Sure. You had multiple opportunities to win this game despite the referees Correct. doing what they did. You're Do right. not blame the referees for why you lost when you had a chance to win even multiple with. Multiple chances to win. Multiple chances. On, on both sides of the ball, too. You challenge penalties then. No. No. Yes. We ch- Do, okay, challenge? Chirk. We saw how I, that worked out when we did the challenging pass interference. Okay, that's a whole different. That's that a whole different thing. How, how about okay. this though? Like, yeah, it, challenge panel. It how about we have a well. rational conversation about it? So how about like, there's some technology that's out there that that probably could make the speed of the game a lot quicker. That I think is super reliable, and I don't understand why we don't have that for first down line for the goal line. Are, it's, are we there, talking sky judge? Anything, anything. We have the technology to be able to tell if the ball crosses mm-hmm. a certain plane. You yeah. know. So take that part out of it for the referees. You know what I mean? Make that stuff quicker. Make it automatic. It's I mean, they, they sky judged uh, Eckler's two point conversion. Right. They didn't exactly. review it. They did it like in real time. Instantly. And it, it right. didn't even have to go to the booth. In and, and out and go 20 through. seconds. Right. So, so there's, there's things you can do to take I've bad referees about, like, out of it. Yeah. yeah. Because the problem with doing some of the things you're suggesting is it's going to extend the game. It's going to make the game longer and it's going to make it unwatchable. But there's actually some productive things you can do to make the, the refs less important. 
important. But. I'm not necessarily saying either. Just to, just to clarify that you should be able to review everything. I just think there's got to be some kind of tweak. I mean, yes, maybe yeah. maybe I two challenges, that. and and you give them a little bit more. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking flexibility. for? Flexibility. Flexibility on what you can challenge. You know, just some some kind of small tweak so, to make it more reasonable. Listen, all time sky judge. I think that's honestly probably yeah. the answer. Just I think so. One hundred percent all the time. Just a sky and, judge. And you put the best guy time. up there. You know, because yeah. you can't always get the best four people. You know, referees on the field for every game they've got to Are you cover. like a, a referee, like kind of like how they have an offensive coordinator up there in the booth and they like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, just so a so head referee. Like the, the XFL had that when they yes. came back? The, in the playoffs, the uh, umpires for Major League Baseball, I'm sorry, they have a replay umpire back in New York. A lot of times they don't even see the video. They're just listening to the, the right. guys that are watching the video. Right, but I want to get back to the game itself. You said you were encouraged by the offense. Do you think that the four, do you think that the forty-two points the offense put up on Sunday was that an anomaly, or do you think that we should expect something like that moving forward? I think we should expect something like that. Why? Uh, when they're at their best, I think they can put up forty on the board in any game, just like they did in the first game and the last game. My issue is this is the way that they got to those points is not sustainable. Well, and my the, the thing I keep saying too is the anomaly in this game is all the injuries. So it, when I get to see the the whole team back on the field, mm -hmm. then I'll can I'll be able to answer better. You know, I'll have better answers to your questions. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure yet what to expect. It's from still this really team. early in the season. It's right. Really early and we've had a lot of guys and this that team are out. Is, if I had to like, it, this is like a uh, a real. You could see this either way, but I'm a. Uh, I think we are arguably like the hardest team to judge because we're always so different. Very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I could see why you say that. From I'm just saying, like the difference between the Vikings game and this game. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it, it, there's Night such a, a swing, yeah. a, and it can be any game. And the one thing I I said last week that I hold on to is don't count them out. You know, even when we went into this game, I said I don't think they're going to get blown out. Right. Don't count them out. Which I will say I was wrong about that. Okay. Uh, there are some concerns I want to bring up about the offense, but we got to head to a commercial bag. When we come come back on the other side of the commercial, there's some things I want to highlight that I want you guys to at least listen and I want to get your opinions on. My name is Lola Silvestri, and I'm going to be 95 this year. I was very independent. I fell, and I had to have meals on wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to ditch the car and start rollerblading to work. I look ridiculous. You look ridiculous! You don't need to start foraging wild berries. I was skeptical, but these are actually pretty good. You don't need to sell your organs on the black market. Lie back. This is gonna hurt. Yeah, that hurts. You don't need to rent out your apartment to drifters. I made a fire with the wood in your bedroom. That's my dresser! And your closet door. You just need an internet connection. Don't get left behind. Start your personal savings plan with the tips and tools on feedthepig.org. That way, you don't need to sell all your belongings and live in a commune. These dungarees belong to all of us now, Tom. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Are you tired of renting, but the idea of owning a home seems unattainable? The Ohio Housing Finance Agency is here to help you realize the dream of home ownership with its 30-year fixed-rate mortgage loans, low interest rates, down payment assistance, and home buyer education designed to prepare you for your journey to home ownership. Visit ohiohome.org or call 888-362-6432 to learn more. That's 888-362-6432. This message is brought to you by the Ohio Housing Finance Agency and aired by the Ohio Association of Broadcasters and this station. Hey, it's Church the Berserker. You're in the Berserk box being a hard worker. We got James. Guess what? He knows all the names. Just sit back and relax. You got Unger to the max. This show will never get any lamer. Because you can't find anybody as entertaining as Kramer. 
how AJ, he is the true fighter. Never meet anybody who is a better writer. In this show, you don't have to worry about Ryan. Because we got a champ, and his name is Brian. Join us every Wednesday at 2 for authentic personalities. Because, you know, all we'll just be dishing out is just the realities. All right, we are back here. So what? The vanilla catch? chinchilla. Yep, yeah, you, you are the vanilla again. chinchilla. It's my favorite bumper because when we come back with that, it gives me like an extra twenty seconds to finish whatever I'm doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All, right. All right. So before the break, you had some offensive uh, I, stuff you well, wanted to propose. offensive stuff or offensive? <laughs> yeah. That, yes. Um, <laughs> that did I say? Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so here's here's where I'm at. In, it's turn, in regards to the offense, the, the thing I feel is I don't feel it's sustainable, okay, what they did. And a lot of that ha- happens to do with the one, the only, Baker Mayfield, who, get surprised, I was going there. Um, <laughs> oh, my God, heartbeat still. <laughs> so what is the one statistic I have been harping on in regards for Baker Mayfield and what his totals have been this season? Yards per attempt, basically? Uh, air yards, yards yeah, after yeah, catch, sure. that, that ratio. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was basically near 2-to-1 ratio on Sunday for yards after catch compared to air yards. 191 after the catch, 191. 14 through the year. Nice shot. Okay. Kobe. So his average depth of target was only 5.2 yards. Mm. Not is that a bad thing? Uh, it is when Odell Beckham Jr. is getting open five yards down the field at 74% of the time. And he's not seeing him and he's, he's not, not getting the ball to him. He's not throwing him the ball. Okay. So he's but not seeing him. He's not throwing him the ball. His average depth of target is only five yards. Okay. But my counter argument would be what if you make that five yard throw and it turns into a 35 yard passing play? My point is that he is not doing enough to attack the defense, to stretch the defense, to make the defense worry about a throw down the field. Mm -hmm. He's turned into captain checkdown. Okay, and that's fine for a backup quarterback. That's what you want, honestly, out of a backup quarterback. But out of your starter, you don't want this. You want a guy that's going to throw the ball down the field. Okay, did you know he had the fifth lowest air yards per completion on Sunday of all NFL quarterbacks? I mean, part of that is the offense, too, and and the plays that we're calling. You know, we are more of a put the ball in the athlete's hands and let them make a play, you know. Uh, And part of that has to do uh, do with the coaching staff's confidence in Baker, I'm sure, to your Mm -hmm. point. Yes. But just playing devil's advocate a little bit. That's fine. But when we get to the the final two drives, specifically the world's worst two-minute drill that that I've ever seen. That was awful. That was a disaster for Baker. Kevin Stefanski wanted to be Freddie Kitchens for a little bit. Mm. None of the offense was anything resembling Freddie Kitchens. No. (laughs) He never could have put up that many points. It did a little bit. No. No. Not none. No, because no, no, no. Freddie Kitchens called long shot plays. There was zero. I get what you're saying, though. There was some bizarre bad decisions made. It felt the in, weird, in that way. In the that weird way, thing is, you sent me a tweet where That's, we it was a highlight complication of Baker in 2018 where he would just snap throws deep down the field. Mm-hmm. He would he would rip throws. He was aggressive. He was yeah. decisive. He's not any of that anymore. Right. He's very indecisive. He doesn't trust his eyes. He doesn't trust his arm. Mm-hmm. He's not throwing down the field. I'm okay. wondering. Where did that go? His confidence is shaken right now. And by what? That's the question. By Does he have the yips? You know, is it a mental thing? You guys aren't giving any uh, uh, credence to this injury. That's what I'm saying. It might be that. You know, it, it, it's possible. It's but, possible, but, but that's why he has no I'm confidence. A, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I guess, uh, use Baker's own words uh, to, I guess, say it's not. It's not affecting him. Yeah. According to himself. It's not Fair. affecting him. I mean, yeah, that's what he Stefanski. says. That's what he has said. I'm so, just saying. If mm-hmm. Kevin Stefanski at Baker Mayfield says it's not a, uh, not an impact, I'm going to go and say that's not an impact then. Yeah. I mean, you're you supposed to, to say word. that. I, I'm using but their I, own words against him. In I'm just because wondering. When because if we're saying something's obviously wrong with him, it just feels like that would be the, the obvious answer. It's possible. Is it? But it? Sure, it's possible. But you know what? He's not He's not even taking chances. So, yeah. Okay? He deserves it, an extension. No. no. He's not taking chances. We That two-minute drill took him 50 seconds to go 12 yards. Yeah, but that he's was not a, calling those plays, But right? he's, making, but the he's making the throws. He's making the throws. It's not about the play calls. It's about the throws. There are guys open downfield. He's not throwing to them. And he's not seeing them. So you, we had an inter- dis- interesting discussion yesterday. And Jack John said we should trade for Russell Wilson. Yes, 100%. I hate it. I don't like that. Why? I don't like Russell Wilson. 
I, oh, I think he's I think he's an overrated quarterback and I, I just don't nice. I don't like that move. I and here's where I'm I'm with James with everything he's saying. The current state of Baker Mayfield is not where I would like to see it at if I'm gonna re sign him to a big money. None contract. of us like where right. he's at. But I mean, it's the Browns. They they would be the ones to do it. Sure. But where we differ is that I think Baker has the ability. I think he can be that guy. He can make those throws. I, we've seen him make some of the most incredible throws. We have. Yeah. But, but right. And it's, that's where it's I'm starting. Been, it's been three years now. I'm you know what I think? And and I, I want to see if you argument. agree with me, Brian. I, I, I feel like I know that Baker is the best Cleveland's going to get. Period. See, that's I, not if we can get Aaron Rodgers. But that's the thing: is Aaron Rodgers going to come to Cleveland? It's historically been a problem. People don't want to come to Cleveland. Yeah, we're not the most attractive uh, destination. So we, so we were twenty agent. years without a quarterback. We didn't have the guy, and right. it, by the end of that, I was begging for anybody: mm-hmm. give me Garoppolo, give me somebody, give me a, a guy like that can come in here. Game? Well, now I have a guy, and and me, James was talking earlier about guys and dudes. You know, yeah. we don't have a dude on our team. We don't have any star. Ours. But we have a guy, a guy who can go in and kind of work and maybe get some wins. We need to remember one thing too. He's won a playoff game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and those a lot of these other did guys. Did he win that? Did he win that playoff game? They he won was the there. game, and he started he was it. There. He was the quarterback. He certainly was there. Uh, so My, yeah, that win goes to him. I'm but. just saying, I don't see us ever getting anything better. That's what I'm saying. Is like, it, I, I'm with you there. I, he's the best of what's around for the Cleveland Browns right now, and. That's where I'm afraid of, like, do you not re-sign him? You're taking a big chance, you know, and if, if you're going to get a guy, you need to be certain that that guy wants to be a part of this culture moving forward. Right. When I was talking to James yesterday, I'm sorry, I love yeah, you. Yeah, you're good. But I was just saying real quick to James yesterday that, you know, we have a fundamental disagreement, and that's where, where it really lies. Uh, James seems to think we can do better, mm-hmm. and I think we think this is very much the best we can get. Because I agree with James. Because here's where I'm at. We, we've seen the Browns play two teams, playoff teams, Super Bowl favorite in the conversation teams in the Chiefs and the Chargers. Never mind what the current state of the Chiefs is now. Mm -hmm. Chances are they can fix some things and they'll probably be back. Okay. Back to be where they're back on track, back where they're supposed to be. Bad thief. But um, (laughs) anyways, um, so we've seen Baker Mayfield not be able to lead the drive at the end of the game against both the Chiefs and the Chargers. Right. Okay. Those are two teams, again, with superior quarterbacks to the Browns and Baker Mayfield. Sure. Okay. So when it comes to playoff time, if you're going to just get to a Super Bowl, you're going to have to beat, what, three teams with better quarterbacks just to get there? Worst worst quarterbacks than Baker Mayfield have won a Super Bowl. They have. That's, That's fair. But... Joe Flacco for the Browns oh, for the that? Browns to even be in discussion for Nine Super Bowl ago? with with anybody starting at quarterback is is pretty good for it, us. It's pretty good, but yeah. I'm just saying you're gonna have to you're gonna have to beat a team like the Chiefs, then beat a team like the Chargers, then beat another team like probably the Bills just to get to the Super Bowl. They all have better quarterbacks. They all have the ability to do something that Baker did not do at the end of this Chargers game. Sure, there's one thing that you notice just ability wise is that. At the end of that game, when the Chargers needed a chunk play to get a ton of yards, they got Justin it. Herbert was just like, "Let's do it." He's a dude, man. Okay, he's, good. he's just like, "Let's yeah. do it." Let's just, he did that all game, just chunk yards, tons Slaying of yards. it too, just they super had, confident. Okay, Baker Mayfield's throwing five yard dump mm-hmm. offs. Okay. They, there's the huge difference. Can the Baker prop prove you wrong, James. What can Baker prove you wrong with a good game? I think it would take when he has one. I think it would take more than one. It's going to take more than one because let's be honest. He is someone who has a wide level of variance in his play. The last two weeks is a perfect example of the Baker Mayfield experience. He could be completely dreadful and he'd be completely efficient. Okay. Right. He. You never know what you're going to get. What is the saying you always use? He is consistently inconsistent. That's what he is. It's yeah. no, you're a hundred percent right. And the thing is, when Justin, when they, when the Chargers dialed up a shot for Justin Herbert, bang, he would hit it like the seventy-five yard pass play to Baker Mayfield. Doesn't see the guys. He doesn't exactly. It's, and, but I just go back to, and, and Justin Herbert, or anybody who's at Justin Herbert's level, isn't going to come to Cleveland. Right. I mean, that, and they're fine. I would, I would love to have Justin Herbert, I'm, but until, but, you know, that actually can happen. Right. I mean, you gotta, you, you have to explore the trade market. 
this off season. You have to. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think it's and a little early to. to say that, but I'm I'm almost there. Well, this off season, we're entering finally your Baker's deal. Mm-hmm. Well, no, so, I'm saying right now, as of today. Uh, but we'll it's see. It's already week it six. It depends on how the rest of the season goes. There's still eleven more there's still, games. There's still a lot. To, there's still a lot to go. But it's just we're not even halfway. A, a, lot, of the, well, a lot of the we're halfway there. Who sings that song? <laughs> Who sings that song? I think it's ACDC. <laughs> no, it's definitely. Oh wait, not. <laughs> that, that was, was even oh, better. <laughs> no, that's Bon Jovi. All right, there let's we go. keep it that way. Every hey, metalhead in the world hates you. <laughs> so here's the thing. <laughs> yes, perfect use. Here's the thing with there you go. Elite quarterbacks and and what what we're looking for is you want a guy that. If there's more than 30 seconds left and you've got the ball with a chance to go down the field and score and win the game, mm-hmm. that, that you say it's too much time. And if it's Tom Brady, if it's Aaron Rodgers, if it's Josh Allen, if it's Lamar Jackson now. Justin Herbert's in that Justin Herbert. That, Russell if, Wilson. If there's more than 30 seconds on the clock and that guy has the ball, I'm going, he's going to win it. Or he's at least put the team in a position to win. Exactly. I do not feel that way with Baker and Mayfield that's right where I, That's where I'm with you. Baker is not there yet, and we need Wait, a guy that did, can be... Did anyone really say... I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to finish by Baker's, saying you need a guy that can finish to be a Super Bowl right. champion. Baker's You're not right. there, but could, do, could he get there is the question. I still think he could. And I do not. Is, is it in within the realm of possibilities? Sure. Mm-hmm. It's possible. It, do I... Would I bet like a large amount of money or say it's probable? No, I wouldn't. Right. I mean, how many here said, or when the Browns had the ball a minute and a half left, you're like, Baker's going to go lead a touchdown drive and we're going to win this game. I thought we were going to win. I was like, nope, not going to happen. Nope. I I watched that entire game. I watched him throw a ton of short passes. I'm like, he's not going to throw the ball far down the field enough to make something happen. Defenses aren't scared of the deep pass against the Browns. It's that simple. Well, it Mm -hmm. would be nice if he would throw the ball to Odell Beckham Jr., but he's not, so... Yeah, the best, the, the most talented player on the team isn't getting the ball. That's not good. Well, we <laughs> That's are not get- good at all. Like your best player needs to be involved in your offense, especially if it's a receiver. And yes. It, the, the issue is the quarterback needs to get the ball to a dynamic pass catcher. Correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, as as great of a game as David Njoku had yesterday or Sunday. Um, Leading receiver David Njoku is not the path to victory. I'm sorry. Mm, no, you don't want that to be. He's a first round, a great first round pick. Okay, no. He's a guy who can have a great game like that from time to time, but you don't want him to be your number one guy. You don't, you don't want, want to go number into number two a, to be Donovan Peoples. Yeah, you don't want to go into Arizona thinking, oh, you know, David Njoku is going to lead us to victory. That's <laughs> not a good plan. It's not a good plan. Yeah. But uh, we got to head to a break. We come back. We got some basketball discussion. Kind of break up the football a little bit. You know, stick around. Uh, we're going to talk some hoops. You don't have to wait for politicians to make Ohio a safer place for your kids. You don't have to wait for anybody. All you have to do is keep your eyes open and remember that bad railroad crossings kill good drivers. When you see a dangerous crossing or crossing signals that aren't working, go to angelsontrack.org and report it. So far, 28 dangerous crossings have had gates installed because of those reports, making Ohio a safer place for kids like yours. Sponsored by Angels on Track, aired by the OEB and this station. I knew something had to give. I was overweight, I didn't exercise, and my doctor told me I would most likely develop diabetes if something didn't change. Fortunately, I joined a program that helped me make healthier choices, like eating better and being more active. The YMCA's Diabetes Prevention Program was a wake-up call that really changed my life. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention predict that one in three Americans could have diabetes by the year 2050. The WISE 12-month Lifestyle Modification Program is part of the CDC's National Diabetes Prevention Program, where the goal is to prevent the onset of type 2 diabetes. For those who qualify, the program is covered through United Healthcare and Medicare. To find where the program is available in Ohio, visit ymca.net slash diabetes. Take control of your health. This message, sponsored by the Ohio Department of Health, aired by the Ohio Association of Broadcasters and this station. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it. You could junk it. Or you can donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-778-1489. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. 
Call right now to donate your car. And as a special thank you, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. Call 1-800-778-1489. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher for donating. Call now, 1-800-778-1489. That's 1-800-778-1489. Hey, yo, this is Kramer, the big man with the big mind, the big opinions, and the even bigger mouth. And you're tuning back in with So What's the Catch on All Sports Cleveland. Uh, big opinions. What an uh, understatement that is. Because that last <laughs> conversation went into the commercial break here. We kept talking. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you have a lot of uh, Baker Mayfield opinions. That's what. That's how this just works. But yeah, anyways, yeah, it's best. It's- Basketball time. Let's go basketball. Basketball. Uh, you know, uh, everyone's favorite former Cleveland Cavalier. Kyrie uh, Irving. Will not play or practice until he can be, what? Full participant. Full participant? Yeah. Case. So he needs to be fully vaccinated. That's what it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know why he's not just saying that. That's what it is. Yeah. And so... Right now, he's scheduled to, what, miss at least half of their games mm. because yep. he can't play in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever, what, or, yeah, whatever. Who they cares? should still be in New Jersey. More than though. half. A lot of the states that they're going to be And there's a lot of the states that are going to be going to where that's a requirement. So I don't, I don't know what the exact number is, but California, I imagine, is one of them. So that's a handful of games there. I'm going to just say, make a bold prediction here. I think Kyrie Irving might retire. Ooh, no, I, I could see that. I think that he's he's really, regardless of what you think about what he stands for and what he's about, he's one hundred percent all in on his opinions of things. You know what I mean? Right. He's very convicted in his opinions and his viewpoints. He's a very different person from LeBron James. Yeah, and he seems very confident in himself, and I could just see him saying, "You know what? I'm I'm done." You know. I've also. I don't know if you guys saw this, but I believe I'd have to go b- back and double check. But I believe at one point he even said, "I wish I hadn't hit the shot in mm. Game Seven against the Golden State Warriors back in 2016." Mm. Don't quote me on that, yeah. but I think I remember I, hearing I, I, that. That sounds vaguely familiar, but I mean, that's what he's remembered for, and I don't think he likes. I don't think he likes that because with the shot, it's also the block, mm-hmm. and so he's tied to LeBron forever. Right. Okay, and so. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kyrie. That's what, how it's gonna be. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be you're gonna be tied to LeBron forever. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna be remembered for your tenure in Boston being a failure, and you are now the third best player on the Nets. I still don't feel too bad for multi-millionaire yeah, Kyrie. No, I don't not, either. I don't feel bad no. for at all, but. Uh, but look, look, here, I was going to ask all you guys this. If you're a coach and you have that, and say he is playing good, like just, just say in your mind he's still Kyrie from the Cavs, mm. um, but see, you still have this situation, would you want to play him those half games when you're away? Or do you feel like that's just screwing up the whole team? You, you can't plan for a home team and an away team. So here's, here's the thing. It's because the – caliber of player Kyrie Irving is is why this is even under consideration at all mm-hmm. okay uh, let's put it this way if this was uh, sorry Turk if this was Taco Fall we're not having this conversation <laughs> no 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 okay? no we're the, not. the Cavs would just straight up cut him okay 100% so it, it's because of who Kyrie Irving is and how good he is what he can do why this conversation even exists yeah that makes right. sense either, either, either way I would not play Kyrie. Nope. I wouldn't do it. That's Kay. kind of the camp I was in. I just felt like it would be weird to do that. It's it going to throw off the team. Right. I yeah. think it would be such an awkward dynamic to have him out there and then say, oh, no, now we can't play him. It, I mean, what are, what are the chances that the they just kind of stagger it so they give they do load management for Kevin Durant or James Harden for one of those games, mm-hmm. and they just replace one of those two with Kyrie when they're away, or you know, when one of those guys inevitably gets hurt because they always seem to get hurt. And this is why I ask, because James usually knows a little bit better than I do. But So, yeah, maybe there is, like, a way you can make it work or whatever. I just, I don't know. It's very complicated, and it would be a uh, a pain in the neck to try and do. I don't think he's allowed to play or practice at all until he goes into the COVID protocols. Mm. What was that, Shirk? Testing everybody. What about it? 
like huh? do that like for the players that aren't like like vaccinated test them. I, I don't have a problem with that, but that's so not an play. option right. in New York. That's not right. an option in California. It's right. it's be vaccinated or you don't play and you don't get paid. What about this possibility? Does he demand a trade to a team that's in a place where he can play home games? Hello Cleveland. Yeah, what if uh, no, <laughs> seriously, uh, that yeah. that's went through my mind. What if he What if he demands a trade back to Cleveland? What now, do we do? Do we sit, do we welcome him back with open arms? And yeah. See you Colin Sexton. Let's I, do it. Yes, I'm 100% in. I'm all in on that. I can't do it. I am all in on that. As much as I would welcome him back, I, the way he like laughed in the terms, uh-uh. Mm. I don't care. I just want to win. He would make the Cavs so much better. Infinitely better. <laughs> Swap out Colin Sexton for Kyrie Irving. Oh, Are you kidding? Goodness. This team would be so much better. I yeah. will give you fall for us. That bumps us from a 12 seed up to maybe an 8. I will give you that. Yeah. I, the, so, team, the team would be better. I think there could be a realistic conversation about playing tournament. Yeah. Okay. Right. With like Kyrie instead of Sexton. What? Would there be championship conversation? No. no absolutely no, not. No. 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 But I, I agree with you that training for Kyrie and bringing him back would make the Cavs drastically better. So I get that. Mm -hmm. But it it was just such a weird way for him to leave, and mm. he was so angry about everything. Like, it even took me a little bit of time when LeBron re-signed for me to fully embrace him again. It took me exactly zero seconds to embrace him once he came back. Yeah, it didn't okay? take me any time. So, <laughs> so, Listen, I, I drove to my parents' house for my LeBron jersey was in storage because I'm like, maybe, one someday, of these days. someday. Yep. And I went, I got it, I put it on, and I wore it for three days straight. Okay, mm -hmm. So it took me exactly zero seconds to be, like, all in. That's, that's what, how I would feel with Kyrie. As that's well. that, so, so in that regard, you and I are built differently. So I would, I would, I would welcome Kyrie Brack, give him back his number two jersey, play long enough so that that number two jersey can end up in the rafters where it belongs. I agree. Yeah. You guys are built differently. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Literally and physically. Figuratively, <laughs> man. So talk what about we, trade for LeBron too. <laughs> Bring the band back together. Let's yeah, do it. Let's, let's, do get, it. let's, let's get, get the band back Smith together, out man. from playing golf and uh, sure. James Jones, no longer the Phoenix Suns GM. We can have Champ on the bench again. Shut Amon, up. JJ up. just Smith. doesn't get the ball in the last minute of the game. Period. <laughs> yeah. Amon no. Schumper comes in. All right. Amon Schumper no. comes back from Dancing with the Stars. Mozgov. Oh boy. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Who else are we missing? Uh, Christian Ayanga. Richard Jefferson. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, Richard Jefferson. Uh, uh, Tristan Thompson. Mm. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now we're really getting them together. Let's, let's get the band back together. All right. Let's, so uh, speaking of the Cavs, Dante Jones. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're throwback now. Uh, let's get a uh, uh, Jamari Alvin. Oh wait, uh, he's got some other issues. Oh well. yeah. Let's sure get does. Anthony Parker. <laughs> So what do we expect from the Cavs? This yes, season? what do you expect from the Cavs? I'm thinking 30 wins. I have them at 28. I give them 40. Of course oh, you do. Boy. Oh boy! Wow. I, I mean, C. I think they're lucky to win 30 no, games. I think they're lucky to win 30. I have them at 28. So that probably's gonna peg them at like what 13th in the East. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd have them right there in the 28, 27, 28 range too, probably. I think they get 10th seed. 25. You're the ultimate optimist when it yeah. comes to not just all teams in Cleveland, but especially the Cavs. Especially the Cavs. Yeah. I look, I succeed. Look, I want the Cavs to get get into the play-in tournament. I want playoff basketball back because I'm not even going to deny this. The Cavs are my favorite team in all of sports. No doubt about that. Interesting. But got the big man roster. What? We got the big man roster. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's really good when the other team just you know throws out five guards. We right. got a lot of rebounding in case the, those guards miss. Them. Right. Mm. So you know we're playing the Warriors and there's drain three, so it's going to come in handy. Yeah. I mean all those missed threes that they have. You got some defenders who could guard the three. <laughs> They're going to triple around them and set screens. Come mm. on. I mean. Well, then you just you just have to go around those screens. No. And not have Darius Garland going around those screens. Just go around, guys. Just go around. <laughs> yeah, just go around. Just go through them like your Albert Bell blowing up the base pad. Oh, okay? my goodness. Great memory. I love that. <laughs> that is a good memory. Oh, jeez. No, I just, I don't, I don't see the Cavs as being anything remotely relevant, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll probably pay attention to them closely until about January when they're like 10 to 15 games below 500 by then. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be like, when I got spare time. 
this, this team roster would be funnier if Drummond was still there. They would be better if Drummond was still here. Much better if Drummond was still here. You think? Yeah. Eh. They, Not much, much, but... He, here, here, hear me out. Andre Drummond's a floor raiser, okay? He gives you a certain level of, of play night in, night out. Mm, yeah. Okay. You know what to expect from a guy like that. Exactly. That's and true. When he was on the team before they decided to bring in Jared Allen and, you know, exile him to Elba like his Napoleon. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> they were playing good. It wasn't sustainable, don't get me don't get me wrong. But they were at least competitive night in, night out. They yeah. were at least watchable. They, they were, were a cohesive unit. Mm -hmm. What once they removed Drummond and put in Jared Allen, it, it all fell apart. Yeah. I agree. Because Jared yep. Allen's young. Jared Allen's not that good. He's only 23. You, you paid a, a center who should be a backup at best $100 million. Yeah, that's bad. That's a mistake. Bad, bad, bad. bad, bad. He's not that good. Yeah. Why did we do it? I don't because know. the Cavs don't know what they're doing. <laughs> okay. I think the NBA is still mad at the Cavs for going to four straight NBA finals because we got screwed in our schedule. Yeah. Or, uh, who cares? Uh, that's, I do. Schedule, schedule, who cares? You got to play every team anyways. Yeah, with that many games, I don't think it matters that much. You're going to be playing back-to-backs against good teams. It doesn't matter. Right. You, you can't play literally the Cavs every night. No. Okay? You can't play uh, the Kings followed up by the Magic. You're, you're going to end up playing <laughs> Lakers and Warriors back-to-back. -back. You're going right. to end up playing you know, and uh, Nets and Celtics. Yes. It's going to happen. We have Lakers, Suns on a back-to-back. -back. Then we have Nets. Warriors on a back to back. It happens. I don't know what to tell you. We yeah. got screwed. Uh, 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 we weren't going to be. You look at every other team. You could say the other, every other team got screwed for the same reason. Right. Okay. Uh, it, it it doesn't mean anything to me. It's just it's a, the schedule's the schedule. You win the games that you play. And let me just make a comparison real quick. When when Chirk was talking earlier about how the Browns are getting singled out, you said that was crazy, right? Sure. All right, but but when it's the Cavs, <laughs> makes total uh, sense. There we go. Touche. Touche. There we go. There we go. I mean, the Cavs also get screwed by the NBA too. Thank you. Turk, I knew Trevor was going to say the that. Cavs stink. They're bad. To be yeah. fair, we won a couple lotteries. You know, if they really wanted to screw us, uh, if they wanted to screw us, they wouldn't have get, allowed us to win the lottery in 03 to yeah. get LeBron. They wouldn't allowed us to win the, the lottery exactly. in 2011 to get Kyrie. We won the, we the most won lottery. important lottery of all time. We won it. So if the NBA has something against us, we've got some pretty darn good luck. Yeah. So all right, all right. we uh, we gotta head to a commercial break real quick. Uh, but when we come back. We got some baseball talk. But until then, Chirk, send us off into commercial land. Are you thinking about buying medicine online? A search for online pharmacies yields more than 20 million results. But which ones can you trust? Medicines bought from unlicensed online pharmacies can be dangerous. You may get a fake drug, your condition may get worse, or you may experience a bad reaction. Don't put your health at risk. To learn how to find an online pharmacy that's safe and legal, visit FDA.gov slash BeSafeRx. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Most of us like to be out in the sun. That's why sunscreen and other safety measures are key to protecting your skin from aging and cancer. The FDA recommends using a sunscreen with an SPF of 15 or higher. Also, look for broad spectrum on the label. That means both harmful ultraviolet A and B rays are blocked. Remember, SPF plus broad spectrum equal healthy fun in the sun. Visit www.fda.gov slash sunscreen for more information. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Creando conexiones durante la recuperación de un trastorno mental y uso de sustancias pone toda la fuerza de la familia y comunidad apoyándole a usted, ofreciendo apoyo y esperanza. Únete a las voces de la recuperación, fortaleciendo familias y comunidades. Para información confidencial sobre desórdenes mentales y de uso de sustancias para usted o alguien que conoce, llame al 1-800-662-4357. Patrocinado por el Departamento de Salud y Servicios Humanos de los Estados Unidos. It's 6.42 p.m. Time for Steve Plato and his son Dylan to do the dishes. They talk about everything from the yuckiness of girls to the awesomeness of his soccer team. Sometimes they don't talk at all. Then, hey, the dreaded <laughs> splash fight. It's dad o'clock, and it's the best time of the day. 
because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. When might you be buzzed? When you suddenly love everything. You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. I love our kickball league. Oh, I love this guy. What's your name? You know what I'd love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzzed warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. I love your car. Is this real leather? You've never experienced anything like this before. From insight, to comedy, to whatever Chirk Berserk is doing, this is So What's the Catch on All Sports Cleveland. You know, uh, October is like my favorite time of year. Not, not only because, you know, football's in full swing, but it's baseball playoffs. Birthday. Baseball playoffs are here. And they you are. also have NBA opening and the NHL opening. But right now we're focused on baseball. Okay. I'm just saying. We got ALCS coming up. We got Red Sox and Astros. Yeah, clap for baseball. Yes. 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 Shout out to the clap in the other room. Shout out. Yeah, but shout out Red Sox, Astros, ALCS. How's everyone feeling about that one? Please, Boston, destroy the Astros. Yeah, I unfortunately I still kind of like the Astros in that series, but I hope that they lose it. I got Red Sox. We got Red Sox. I'm yeah, just, I, like I said the other day, Team of Destiny vibes. I'm just feeling it. Yep, I'm they do have that kind of feel that they they're getting. I mean, those back-to-back walk-offs, like, yeah, they got Team of Destiny vibes for sure. I'm picking Boston to win that series. Mm. I don't know. I'm not betting on it. I know that uh, much. Yeah. yeah. And depending on postseason baseball. Take yeah, Astros. hard. What was that? Take the Astros. You're taking the Astros. So we got two for the Stros. Everyone else is taking Boston. Everybody else is taking Boston. Who you got, Kramer? I. What's the question? <laughs> Red Sox or Astros in the ALCS? Who do you think that's going to the World Series? Oh, uh, Red Sox. I like that. I don't like Boston. Uh... But, like, if, if all the other teams that I like are out, I kind of like Boston. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know? okay. They're, like, an, an outlier team for me that I, like, I feel more positive towards than negative. Okay. So, we got game five tomorrow night, the Dodgers and the Giants. This series should not be ending in five games. It needs to go to full seven. Well, it's an ALDS, or NLDS, so it's only going to be five. Yeah. What is it right now? This will be 2-2. Two, two. Winner moves on. Yeah, that's like I said last week. It should never be less than a seven-game series. I yeah, think I agree. Five games. But this series convinced me of that. Yeah, it's just, especially when it's it's so good. It's such a good matchup. Like, why wouldn't you want more games? I, they, I wish this series was the, for the World Series. What do you think? I think this might be for the World Series. Whoever wins this is probably going to win the whole thing. I think so. I think that it'd be a safe bet to put money on whoever wins this series winning the whole so thing. So who you got? It's Arias against Logan Webb. Give me the Doyers. You're yeah. going L.A.? I'm... I'm leaning LA, but I would I would really 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 love to see Buster Posey get another World Series. Yeah, I wouldn't hate it if the Giants won. It just yeah. you know, I, I'm just I gotta I gotta look at both teams. I gotta look at which one do I feel is mm-hmm. more capable of in a pressure situation yeah. delivering. I went the okay. other way on the other one, but I'm with you on this one. I'm going I'm with going the Dodgers. I'm going with the Giants. Okay. I hope you're right. I'd like to see them. I just think with Buster Posey, Brandon Crawford, Brandon Belt, they have that experience of being in pressure pack situations. Like, for example, 2014 NLCS, they were... No, they were up 3-1. I'm sorry. And then in 2014 World Series, they went the full seven games against Mm -hmm. Kansas City. So they've been in pressure pack situations before. They have the experience... I'm going with the veterans. I just I can't trust Brandon Crawford or Brandon Belt. Mm. That's fair. I mean, uh, yeah, they've had productive seasons, but sorry, I mean they are who they are. Okay, they're Brandon Crawford had a, a season where he's playing above his skill level. Uh, Brandon Belt is fine. Okay, I just I, I look at the Dodgers and it's just hard not to be like. How can you not pick the Dodgers? They've got it all. They, they, just, they do. Really do. They have just such a talented roster. Yeah, they do. Just, they I have like it the all. Dodgers. Dodgers over the Giants. Yeah. Shark, what's up? Dodgers or Giants? Let's go with the. I'll go with the Giants. Okay. Okay. So three to two. All, all right. right. All right. So 
What did you think of that White Sox Astros series? I personally enjoyed it. Even I wish the White Sox had put up more of a fight than they did. Uh, good riddance to the White Sox and John Cusack. Yeah, I say good riddance to the White Sox. I don't like them. I don't like the Astros either, though. So I wasn't really. So what do you guys have teams. against the White Sox? They're a divisional rival, and everybody else in the world <laughs> does not like their divisional rivals. But you seem to be fans of every one of our divisional it's rivals. Only, let's no, hold I, on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm putting you in the hot seat right now. Okay? Yeah, I All do right. not like the White Sox. No, no, I'm not going to say you right, like the White Sox, but here, here, here's why I'm going to put you on the hot seat. Okay, you're, you're a fan of the what's going to be the Guardians, correct? Yeah. The division rival of the White Sox. You also happen to be a Cubs fan who is the crosstown rival of the White Sox. Yes. You can't like or root for the White Sox. Yeah. I don't. Ask I, White, Sox, White Sox Dave that. Exactly. I never yeah. said I liked the White Sox. Uh, listen here, John Cusack. Uh, you can't root for the White Sox. <laughs> I, the only reason I was rooting for them was because they were playing Houston. I just I don't understand ever rooting for a division rival. You don't. Ever. You can't. I In can't, a million I, years. I, I hate the Astros, too. Yeah. Okay? But I'm never going to root for the White Sox to win. Yeah. Over the Astros. Even Just if don't do it. Even if it's the Astros. So you're saying I should have stayed neutral. You stay neutral. You hope that whatever team wins this series loses in the next round. Fair enough. That's the way I looked at That's it. That's the way I looked at it. I wish they both could have lost that series. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I get it. Braves Brewers. What the hell happened? Nothing. What the hell happened? Braves won. Hmm. Yeah, All right. it's a succinct explanation. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is. It's it's accurate. I mean, but I, I think the follow up question: Did Milwaukee miss their best opportunity for a title? Was a good one. It is. It yeah. is because uh, I would have took that pitching staff toe to toe with everybody else still left. Yeah, right. I think it would have been a cool story if Milwaukee had won the World Series because then they could have made a okay. <laughs> they. Got to pee, radio people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all three listeners. Uh. <laughs> I just think it would have been cool if Milwaukee had won because then they could have said, we have the NBA championship, and now we have the World Series. Sure. Sure. I think, to me, that's a cool story. I would have been okay with them winning it. I don't have anything against the Brew Crew, but I, I think they blew a big opportunity, especially with guys like Acuna being out for the Braves. You know, it's like, Absolutely. when are you going to get a better opportunity to beat the Braves organization than they just had? Right. And a five-game series, too. It's like, you yep. know, they, it's the best shot they could have ever asked for. Yeah, and, and they and blew it. As far as the NLCS goes, over the Braves' face, they're going to destroy them. I think so, too. Yeah. Uh, the, the Braves don't have the pitching. No. The... They're really going to miss Acuna there. Sure, they have Freddie Freeman still, but it's Ronald Acuna that you don't have. Yeah, right. Yeah, the, it, the best I, player, I'm arguably s- the best player in the entire league, you know, is yeah. not playing, and that's problematic. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 100%. Like I, I love me some Charlie Morton, but yeah, you know, uh, but Ground Chuck ain't gonna be uh, able to uh, do his job against the Dodgers and Giants. Yeah, but. I love Ian Anderson, but against the Giants, no. Let me ask you a question, just because I'm a giant Buster Posey fan. Okay, do you, ah, you guys giant think? Buster Posey ah. fan. I see what you did there. I didn't mean to. It was unintentional. But that anyway, was <laughs> <laughs> right. um, do you think he's underappreciated? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, good. Because he's a catcher. Yeah, absolutely. Hall of Famer? Yeah, I think he's hands down Hall of Famer. I think he's the best catcher of our generation by I far. Would, oh, would, best catcher of our generation? Of Famer, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm with that. Mm-hmm. What about Yadier Molina and Salvador Perez? I'm... You can argue defensively, yeah, but I'm, I, I'm talking all around, you know, five-tool player. Y- y- Yachty don't see... doesn't have the offensive numbers. Right. Uh, I don't think Yachty's going to make it to the Hall of Fame because of that. I, I don't honestly expect him to make it there either. Uh, as far as Salvador Perez goes, he probably won't make it either. Okay. Wow. Getting in the Hall of Fame as a catcher is extremely difficult. That's true. Go. I have to give you that. You have to do a lot of things well and for a long period of time. Buster right. Posey's done that with his bat. The other two have. Right. Not only that, but the things that he's overcome in his career too. And and every time he just comes back, and it's like, is he gonna be the same? And, and he's, he's got he's got the feel good story to go along with it. Yeah, yeah, right. Plus he has three World Series uh, titles. I what think was that? Oh, no, no, come on, come on. Come on, say it. Do you think he's better than James Posey? <laughs> yes. Why? <laughs> why did I, why did uh, I question whatever this okay. was? Okay. Uh, yes. Why, Wait. Why I was like trying to. Do you, 
I knew it was. So, with, yeah. What is with the bell ringing? I don't know. It's time for class. <laughs> Honestly, I think. I'm about to school you. If Mike Trout didn't exist, I think there'd be a legitimate argument for Buster Posey being the best player overall. Of our generation. Wow, that's a, I Over guess, the generation, the, yes. The, I'll, the I'll way agree. he produces for that yeah. position that he plays is just invaluable. You can't put a price on what it's like to get that much production out of your catcher. It's I mean, just incredible. Look at, look at Cleveland's catchers. Okay, yeah. uh, outside of two, uh, out you know, outlier seasons, one from uh, Roberto Perez, the only Victor from Martinez Gulps. had a good year. Uh, but Victor but, Martinez has been here in like what a decade. Right, right, so, right. So I mean, you look at. The, the one year we had a Perez, one year we had a Gomes, and it's been a nightmare mm-hmm. outside of that. It's been terrible. It's yeah. been like, yeah, good behind the plate, so we just deal with it. Uh, right. Yeah. You essentially have like a National League pitcher batting in our lineup. Yeah. yeah. That's true. And the other thing is, too, is that a lot of guys that hit like Posey, they, they switch positions earlier in their career because they, they stayed and catcher. He stayed a catcher, and he's still had the longevity that he's had. It's amazing. He's, he's a freak of nature, in my opinion. So. You both said Yadier Molina is not a Hall of Famer. You don't think he's two World no, Series? No, I said he might not be a Hall of Famer. I say, I say he's not, definitively. You don't, even with the two World Series rings? No. You, you don't, don't think that do, means did anything? Did not do enough with the bat. Yeah. You have, to do, you have to hit a certain level of production with the bat to get there. I just don't think he's there. I, I, and I'm, I feel pulling like there's, his, I'm pulling up his stats. It's now. like a guy like Omar Vizquel. Is he a Hall of Famer? There's yeah. probably plenty of people who not, have rings and just aren't Hall of Famers. That's true. Right. But I my mean, point with Omar is, like, you know, it, it's hard to argue there's ever been a better defensive shortstop I than would him, just say, but he's not a Hall of Famer right. he didn't produce at the plate. I so would, I'm looking at Yadier Molina's okay. uh, numbers here. Uh, 280, 330, 402, slash line, 733 OPS. That's that's pretty good for a catcher, right? But here's here's the other thing: 171 home runs over 18 years. Not okay? good. 998 RBIs over that same period of time. He's mm. not doing enough in that department. I okay. agree. He's only just cracked the t- 2,000 hit barrier like a year ago. Right. Okay. So I think the Hall of Fame, like sometimes we just we let people get into Hall of Fames too easily too, and I like that. <laughs> Harold Bain. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. I, Hall the, of Famer ever. I right. never said he would be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I just said Hall of Fame in general. If he does get in at any point, it it's won't gonna, be first ballot. Oh sure, no yeah. way! Yeah. Not. No. Uh, He's got Veterans Committee written all over him. Yeah. So after he is on the ballot for 10 years and doesn't get in, or he like falls off after a couple of years, he'll get on the Veterans Committee. Yeah. But I he's not going to get voted in. Right. I think he could get voted in on his like fifth or sixth year. You are just too big of a fan of Yadier Molina. Mm. Let's let's be honest here. I mean, he, he, does, he hasn't done enough. He hasn't done enough. I mean, Maybe I need to take my fandom out of it. It's hard to sometimes. It I is. Understand that. It yeah. is. But uh, we have to uh, head to a break. Uh, we come back. We got hour two. We got some. Uh, Let's get weird. We're gonna get weird. Weird. We oh. Talk. Stick around. Allison is perfect. I mean, she'd never tell you that. She's perfect. Allison, wait. Are you texting and driving? Texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Did you know that generic drugs are just as safe and effective as brand name drugs? Generics might look different, but they work the same way. And they can even save you money. Don't believe me? Ask your doctor or pharmacist. Or visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. The traditional light bulb. A groundbreaking invention in 1879. It's time we switch to longer-lasting Energy Star light bulbs. They're more efficient than the old bulbs, like a text message is more efficient than a carrier pigeon. And they cut down on our energy costs. Because in our own groundbreaking age, we deserve a light bulb that saves us some cash. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. Imagine me, a dog, moving in with a human. I didn't know how it would work. Turns out... My human's pretty entertaining. For instance, every time I give my human his ball, he throws it as far as he can. And I'm like, dude, that's your ball. So I go get it. But he just throws it. Again. I gotta say, though, the more he does it, the funnier it is. I love my human. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. 
Here's farmer and businessman James Wood. We farm about 3,500 acres. There's pipelines everywhere. The contractor working on my property did not have the lines located before he began work, and it resulted on a strike on a natural gas pipeline. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but it could have been much worse. Never assume the location or depth of underground lines. Always call 811 or visit clickbeforeyoudig.com before you start work. A message from the Pipeline Operators for Ag Safety Campaign. Hi, it's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. <coughs> When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund. Hour two on So What's the Catch is when things get weird. Here on All Sports Clean. So, anyways, uh, we are back here. <laughs> yeah, weird already. Weird. We are about to, uh, that last conversation was just kind of uh, coming into this, I guess. But anyways, uh, hour two, more NFL. Uh, controversy is Lots the, uh, of controversy. Is the theme of, of this segment here. John uh, Gruden. John Gruden. It's John Gruden finally for, somebody for other than Obi Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer is probably dancing right oh, now. Oh, I think he sent John you Gruden. You know, that's a good a, point. He's probably, <laughs> he probably sent John Gruden a fruit basket for no, sure Gruden or something. Who knows? Resigned. You should have been fired immediately, Mike. Okay, uh, uh, do you want my, want my read on this? He was given the option to either resign with dignity or get fired. Yeah. I, that's probably He chose right. to resign. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fired. He, they were going to if he didn't resign. Right. Yeah. That's they why it was the quick, quickest him. resignation. So couldn't say he didn't resign. <laughs> there's reasons that. teams do that, though. There's yeah. legal reasons. Because there there's is. a difference between somebody resigning and getting let go. Think about how big his contract is. By Ten him resigning, years. By him resigning, the Raiders are off the hook for his deal. Yep. Wow. They don't owe him $60 million over the next six Amazing years. Amazing for them. He doesn't deserve a penny. No. Well, he's not getting any of it. Yeah, he's not getting The Raiders don't owe him that money anymore. The Buccaneers also said they're taking him out of the ring of honor. Right. Yeah. Deservedly so. ESPN probably won't take him back as a commentator. Oh, he's, he's done. done. He's, he's done. done. He's Napoleon. He's he done. He is done. He's yeah. done. It's over. So do you think the ship focus now shifts back to Urban Meyer? No. No. No, it's, no. that's not how the new cycle works. No. <laughs> it's, 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 no, it we don't go backwards. Because here's the deal. It's, it's going to be the John Gruden discussion for the entire week. Okay? Yep. It already has been. It's going to continue to be the John Gruden discussion. Okay. It's going to be about what he said. It's going to be about who he said it to. It's going to be about how long has he been saying things like this. There's what did they say? 700? 75,000 emails? 75,000 is what I heard that they're digging through. Yeah. So there's going to be more. This is just what they found so far. Right. And There's the, going to be more. The crazy thing about this whole story is that if I remember correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, which m maybe I am, but uh, it this whole thing started with an investigation into the Washington football team. Yes. That's correct. Uh, this yeah. is collateral damage in yeah. uh, that investigation. They're, right. they're investigating the sexual misconduct claims of the Washington football team, right. which uh, uh, Gruden may or may not have been involved in one uh, part of it a little bit because, you know, the topless photos of cheerleaders being sent back and forth and saying disgusting Good things about God. that. Good but, Lord. It, it, the thing to, that just blows my mind is that boomers just don't understand how the internet works and how email works. Like, they're using email as, like, a text conversation. You know what I mean? It's like... They're using the, team accounts and, uh, yeah. you know, official accounts you, through networks and you stuff. You have to be so disconnected from reality when it comes to the internet and how things work to think that that wouldn't come out eventually. One, even with a text message, once you hit the send button... It's there forever. It's there forever. in cyberspace. Somebody will say... Go find somehow, some way to find mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah, I agree. I mean, but I mean, let's let's be honest here. We gotta we gotta look at what he said and what he, he was doing and mm -hmm. uh, how long it probably went on for. Because it, uh, from what I have heard, Keyshawn Johnson said that's exactly how he was in fraud. Tampa. Yeah, he said he's okay. A then so Keyshawn said, "I see a Gruden." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! He called him a fraud. He said he's. He is. Fraud, yeah. So you, you look at everything that he said, and you look at the Raiders organization. Okay, we've had a conversation about the Raiders organization and what their history Several. is. Yeah. Okay, their history, organization-wise, is one of diversity, acceptance, inclusion. Right. He 
was the complete opposite of everything there. Okay, the the Raiders were the first team to hire a minority head coach. They were the first team to hire an African American head coach in the modern era. They had the first female uh, front office executive, and they had the first openly, openly gay, gay player. active player, Carl Nassib. Yep, Carl Nassib. So shout out, he, shout out, Carl Nassib. He managed to insult all of them throughout yeah. all those events. Right. Mm-hmm. He spit on the face of the Raiders. He spit on the legacy of Al Davis. Mm. It, this is it was unacceptable. Have to go. Yeah, a hundred percent. I, you couldn't be more right if you tried. I mean, yeah, I, I, did, I I'm sh- struggling to find anything good to say about the situation. There's just not much good you could say about it. There's no point to argue against what you just said. Everything you just said is a hundred percent correct. <laughs> and it, it's bad for the NFL. It's a bad look for the NFL right now. But at the end of the day, I think this is going to be good for the NFL. I think that there's going to be a lot of other guys out there that are going to get exposed that we don't need in NFL locker rooms going forward. If, if we want the league to be about you know, this uh, openness and acceptance and we can't have people inside organizations who are talking that way. You just can't have it. It's right. totally con- it's counter to the, the whole mission of what the NFL is stating. Oh, that, you know. A hundred percent. And right. I hate to bring this name up, but I feel like it kind of circles back to Colin Kaepernick. Am I wrong there? Uh, he criticized <laughs> kneeling, if, if that's what you're trying to get back to. He was yeah, not a fan I, of that. I think he was talk, He talked about Eric Reed, though. It, 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 yeah, the kneeling thing. Mm-hmm. Which was, yeah. Again, the began with Kaepernick. And right. Reed. Yeah, and I guess what I'm also trying to say by saying this whole thing circles back to Kaepernick is that's when the league started, I felt like at least, the league started to become... You know, where it's... Conscious of... Yeah, conscious, conscious yeah. of this whole thing. I yep. see where you're going now. Yes. Yeah, I wasn't sure where you were going with it at first, yes. but now I got you. Thank you for helping me out there, Kramer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I could, I would bet money that there's somebody, at my, probably multiple people, coaches, uh, you know, various coaches who have racist stuff out there in their email and are, like, sweating bullets oh, right God, now. Yeah. I mean, this makes me wonder, like, what, what we're going to keep finding That's out. what I mean. Because this is back from, like, 2011, right? Yeah. There's no way they went through all 75,000. It's I think 650,000. 650? Coaches, you're going to find a lot Weren't there... Did That's what I mean about these old people. They're using it as t- like text messaging. They're what? sending like thousands of emails a day. Yeah, it's like insanity. I feel like this is going to be just the, the tip of the iceberg. Tip of the iceberg. Yeah. I right. Mean, it, it really we is. might see it, a lot of turnover. Do you in the remember NFL in the next reports? I don't remember what year the NFL draft was, but when Laramie Tunsil had that picture of him like yeah. with the the gas mask. The gas oh, mask. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Legendary. Sure. Yeah. That was yeah. Legendary. So that type I don't of thing. Think anything should have or wasn't Josh Allen like questioned about some like rate edgy tweets he sent out? Oh, they were racist. Yeah, he said some racist things. There were some racist things. Right, so that's what I'm trying to get at. Well, well, right, but when you look at it being said by a teenager. As opposed to a full-grown adult, you know, like yeah, there's, there there's is a difference. A diff- there, there is a difference there. One, two. When we're looking at it from uh, the aspect of a John Gruden, from the aspect of other executives on teams, these are guys in positions of power, right? Who are determining whether or not certain individuals have jobs or not. Okay. Right. Let's not forget, Marquette King was quite was uh, cut by the Raiders because John Gruden didn't like him. Okay. Yep. He was the best punter in the league when the Raiders cut him, and he hasn't got a job since. Oh yeah, okay. that looks rough now. Yeah, yeah. The Mar- okay. that's a bad look. That, that looks really bad right now, doesn't Looking it? Looking back mm-hmm. on it and so, now, the Marquette the King thing did not age well. It, it didn't, no. wasn't aging well. I mean, it wasn't ever going to age well. <laughs> no. But, yeah. So you look at that, and it's like, okay, this is a big issue. Then you look at the fact that these guys are supposed to be the leaders. They're supposed to be mm-hmm. the, the examples, the faces of these franchises. Right. You can't say that... Uh, any, I mean, I didn't say anything like that to begin with. It's terrible. But there's a different standard for a coach or a front yeah. office executive and owner, what have you, saying something like that versus a player. Yeah. Well, I can I, say just two words and put it into context. Hugh Jackson. I mean, we know what it's like to have a coach who doesn't exemplify what you want to exemplify for a team. I'm not comparing the yes, two as yes, far as yes, like, the I racism. Understand. I get what you're yeah, saying. I'm just I saying, get. like, a coach... Uh, the coach is so important that having a bad coach can can make a whole team blow up. We've oh, yeah. experienced that. Mm-hmm. Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens, Hugh Jackson. And, and as far as owners saying stupid things, uh, we can look to the NBA, Donald Sterling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was an all-time bad look. Yeah. Okay, and he was forced to sell his team. 
Yeah, coaches are important. They, they should be held to a higher standard. It's a higher standard. Yeah, they're yeah. facing right. the franchise. They're they're uh, they are the guys that you're supposed to be looking to for leadership, uh, direction, and. You can't have. I mean, it was very obvious that once the the second round of emails got released, that he was done. Yeah. All I'm all I'm trying to say is, again, I'm not comparing John Gruden to Josh Allen or and vice versa. All I'm saying is, it's the same idea if you think about it. Like from a broad perspective, sure. But one one thing's just a stupid teenager sending out a tweet. The other is a, a guy that's determining that's employment of individuals. It's a, yeah. So if you're if you just drill down one step, it's entirely different. Yeah, people's livelihoods are depending on their decision making. And they're saying racist, misogynistic, yeah. homophobic things. People's so. livelihoods aren't hanging in the balance of a 14 year old's order, dumb tweet, you know. In order for John Gruden to, I think, ever be forgiven, he would have to do a tremendous amount of activism. Oh, he will never be forgiven. No, Are you kidding? He's done. No, so he's done. The only case he could be forgiven. He's done, so. Yeah. You have to do uh, I can't say what, here, here's what, here's what I'll tell you. I can't say what I said about John Gruden on radio, but uh, expletives, 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 okay? Yes. Uh, when I saw what he said and and, and wrote in an email, mm -hmm. so yeah, I didn't say anything positive about John Gruden, and he did not deserve to anything positive. He said. No, mm -mm. no. Uh, real quick, we we only got a couple minutes, but I just wanted to mention this. Uh, uh, another collateral damage from this investigation: Adam Schefter uh, sent an email to Bruce Allen about a story that he was doing, and um, for changes, tweaks. Uh, ways that he wants it worded and refer to him as Mr. Editor. Mm. Uh, journalism 101, this is a big no-no. Yeah. You, you don't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not at all. Uh, it's not a good look. No, it's not. Uh, and if uh, if you've checked Adam Schefter's mentions today, oh, they are hilarious. Uh, uh, yeah, everything he tweets today has been, oh, is that? did you send that to uh, Bruce Allen? Right. Uh, did you send that to Mr. Editor? Well, how's Mr. Editor feel about this? <laughs> right, right. <Good laughs> as Lord. it should be. Good job, Internet. <laughs> That's one of the times when the internet can be entertaining. Every now and then, like the internet, it wins one for the for the little guys. Oh, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, so, message to anyone uh, in this room, but anyone listening, uh, hopeful journalist in the future, don't do that. Yeah, don't. Do no, that. don't do that. <laughs> not a good, not a good look. No, <laughs> no. You, that's 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 a big no-no. Uh, to make sure to get the right phrasing. Yes. To verify information, that's one thing. Changing the story and making tweaks and calling yeah. the person Mr. Editor. No. Just in general, like I hope any, and this is pertinent to us now graduating, people going into this kind of field need to understand you have to have a level of integrity, and, and there was no integrity in that move. 100%. 100%. None. We got a platform here where we can like just say like how we feel and be able to make a difference. Shefty's a Michigan guy too. I'm really disappointed in him. Oh, 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 oh okay. that makes that's sense. A, that's a, that's yeah. a shame on the old uh, Michigan man there. Yeah, not a good look for the university either. Oh, wait. Oh. Michigan man. I know. Michigan man of integrity? Question mark? Uh, question mark. Question Put mark? Put a question mark next to his name. I'm, I have no problem with that. All right. All right. Well, we are going to head to commercial land. But <laughs> I just thought of literally. Right into John Gruden. <laughs> literally, we put a question mark by his name. It's just going to be <laughs> Adam Schefter? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a commercial. Let's go to commercial land. A lot can happen in six seconds. A rodeo ride, a dramatic basketball win, and the world record holder can solve a Rubik's Cube. Six seconds is how long it takes for an 18-wheeler traveling at a safe speed to come to a complete stop. And in those six seconds, that truck will travel the length of two football fields. So please, give them room. Never cut in front of a large truck for any reason. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 18 wheelers and large buses have big blind spots and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. My dad came to live with us last month, and you know, it's going pretty well. I feel like I never have time for myself. With him being around more, it really lets us catch up on things. His memory isn't what it used to be. We get up and we have coffee. He usually wakes up at 4.30. Then we go for a walk. He needs lots of my attention. I do need to keep an eye on his medications, though. That's important. Sometimes I feel like a pharmacist. I'd say John and the kids are adjusting. 
pretty well. They honestly have no idea what I'm going through. It can be a little challenging. Help. But so far, so good. I could really use just a little help. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers for advice, tips, and support. Together, let's help each other better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Hey guys, bow season's right around the corner, so get out to PJ's Custom Archery and Lapidary Shop. PJ's make custom bows to fit anyone. They also make takedown survival bows and flint knives as well. Ladies, PJ's has custom-made jewelry. You'll find unique, one-of-a-kind bracelets, pendants, earrings, and much more. PJ is a real craftsman with an artistic lair. PJ only uses materials found or made in the USA. So hurry out to PJ's Custom Archery and Lapidary Shop, located at 112 Leonard Street in South Amherst, or call 440-986-0490. You wanted the best? Well, too bad. You're stuck with us. It's So What's the Catch on All Sports Cleat. It's one of my favorite bumpers. That's one of my favorite, too. And, yeah, we are, you guys are stuck with uh, with us, but uh, you're only stuck with me for 15 more minutes because i got to leave at 3.30 today. Wah, wah, wah. But uh, let's go with uh, – let's, let's do this last segment here, college football. All right. Let's Alabama talk about it. goes down. What about Cincy? What about? I it? told you Cincy was legit. <laughs> oh come on! Cincinnati <laughs> just hasn't been found out yet. I would like to go back to I think it was my first episode on the show saying that this college football season could be, just be absolute chaos and insanity. Oh no, that's it, definitely for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's one hundred percent. And that's where we are at, and I think that more is to come. <laughs> and there is. Yeah, and, and I think it's good for the game, honestly. I mean, I think people are tired of seeing Bama just win every year, every other year, and, oh, and it's good for the game. And it's exciting right now. I mean, now. four of the teams in the Big Ten they're, that are in the top ten yeah. are going to play each other. Yep. Okay, so it's We're going to find out. Yeah. That's going to be a, a whole just spin cycle of nonsense. Yeah, this happens. top ten as it stands will not look the same at the end of the year. Oh, no it way. won't. Right. It, you know, and, you know, Iowa, uh, Iowa's fun at two. It's, it's cute. Yep. But where's the letdown? Come on. We, we know Their where it's coming Their offense stinks. It's, it's bad. Dreadful. I will concede that they beat us on Saturday. It, yes, it, they did. If you love football in 1942, Iowa's your team. Right. It sucked to see Clifford go down because Penn State, you know, I, th- I think that they would have won that game. Yeah, we probably would have, but I... I just I'm not not impressed by Iowa. I mean, I know their defense is great, but it's just like they're not going to put up enough points to hang with any of these teams. I mean, Clint, like, what what are the chances Iowa loses to Purdue this week? Uh, I mean, down game. Yeah, this is how it good, goes. There's a good chance. I think that this is a very good trap game for Purdue to go. You know, make the upset. That, that's what Purdue does. They just screw up good team seasons. They do. It, it seems like the Indiana teams. Indiana does it once in a while too. They'll be <laughs> one of the best teams in the Big Ten out of nowhere. Yep. But, Anyway, yeah, I think it's great for the league. It's, it's, I don't know how good it's going to be for the Big Ten over the next couple of weeks because we're going to see a lot of turnover and a lot of change. And mm-hmm. um, But we're going to find out. We're going to find out a lot about these teams in the next couple of weeks. I have to reassess and, re, like, reassess and relearn Penn State because I feel like the offense is going to look a lot different with Sean Clifford out. So... Mm-hmm. And I don't know a lot about our backup quarterback. Uh, I did not. Did hear not good look things. good. Yeah. yeah, I didn't hear any good things, and I definitely didn't see any. Yeah, good I was, you know, in post game, I was trying to say like the reason Penn State lost was because of the backup quarterback, but yeah, I can't. It was the turn the four turnovers that really undid Penn State because the thing is with that, they're like Jordan. It was Oklahoma who put in their backup quarterback because Spencer Rattler mm-hmm. wasn't doing well. And guess what? They would, they made an epic comeback to beat Texas. And, and the, here's the thing, though, is that Penn State isn't on the level of those programs in terms of recruiting. Like when, when you have a quarterback go down for a team like Alabama or, or shoot, even Ohio State in the Big Ten, they've got a guy behind them that could still win every single because game. They because they have recruit. five-star talent that, that they just are constantly, you know what I mean? Penn State, they should have a backup guy. If they, yeah, they want to beat teams like Ohio State, if they want to get over that hump and become a Bama, they, that's the type of player you need. Yeah, Alabama. You need a backup quarterback. Right. Typically, I, this is an atypical year, but typically Clemson's a tier one team. 
Ohio State's a tier one team. Alabama, LSU. I would say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> LSU. I-, I can't say LSU is a tier one team. They're too inconsistent. That's fair, but they also play in the toughest conference right. league. So, so yeah, but so, like, I would say Penn State's tier two. Is that a fair assessment? I, I guess I'm okay with them being in tier two. I, I don't the, know. The low end of tier two is probably where I put them. Yeah, yeah for now. So that's where, that's right. Where They're them. not a playoff team. If that's you know. No, I see. The, I'm a Penn State fan, but I'm a realistic Penn mm-hmm. State fan. I don't think. I want us to beat Ohio State on October 30th, but if we have to go with our backup quarterback... It's I'm, definitely not happening. I'm not yes, confident. Loving God, backup quarterback. Yeah. Anyways, I'm um, not confident about let's, that. Let's look at the top four here. Uh, we have Georgia, Iowa, Cincinnati, Oklahoma. Uh, when it's all said and done, uh, one of those teams will still be there for sure. Georgia. Yeah, Georgia. It's Georgia. Uh, I think Oklahoma definitely has a shot. A good nah. shot. I, I don't Oklahoma think so. has the best shot out of the other teams in the top four. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, um, Iowa and Cincinnati are not going to be there. They're not going to be. And the other two, um, a- as of now, Alabama, Ohio State. Yep. That that's your I no think, problem. As of that. right now, that would be your top four. I'd put. I'd still uh, have Bama in the top four. I don't yeah. think they deserve to be bumped out of the top four. I, I think it's fine bumping them out of the top four for now, just right? Because we we know how this, we know what's going to happen. Yeah, we they're, know what's going to happen. They, they're going to work their way back up to the they're top. They're going to get yeah. their ba- all the way back to the SEC title game. They'll mm-hmm. they'll they'll beat Georgia. Georgia will drop down to four. Alabama will be like two. Yep. And then the final four will be, uh, you know, winner of the Big Ten. That'd be fun, but I, I don't think, think so. It'd probably be honestly they'll probably just throw Alabama back at one if they won the SEC title. It'd be yeah. Alabama. Yeah. Then it would be Georgia. Probably, yeah, Alabama. Then probably Georgia. Then Ohio State and Oklahoma. As of right now, yeah. Yay. I don't with same old, same old. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't want that. I don't. At all. But here's the thing. Like I said earlier, like I, I still think more chaos is to come. I think sure. there's so. chaos on the horizon. Yeah. See, it really is. I, it could be totally different. Right. Like, we might see a top four. We might see teams we've never seen in the playoff before, and we might see Cincinnati. teams like Alabama. Not Cincinnati has no chance. I yeah. completely disagree. I, I know you. I know you do. But I'm telling you, Cincinnati has no chance. Even if they, L- I did. I don't at, think they belong. So here's. They look at the programs that are right on Cincinnati's heels right here. Mm-hmm. You have Oklahoma, Alabama, Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, Oregon. Oregon still is even in the mix, okay? Mm-hmm. You have teams with a certain pedigree. Yes. Even if that pedigree is second tier. Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio, not Ohio State. Uh, Penn State. Penn State. Mm-hmm. Kentucky. Oklahoma. Kentucky's a non No, Kentucky's not tier two. But you look at those do you know why Alabama gets in all the time, even though they probably shouldn't get in sometimes? You know, shout out the year they didn't win the SEC title. So they got in four. <laughs> right. It's because it's Alabama. Yeah. It, if the teams are close enough, so in Alabama, Oklahoma, Ohio State, what have you, they're going to get in over Cincinnati. Why? They deserve it. Yeah. They deserve to be X. Make an argument. Don't I, I say a better argument for you wouldn't be Cincinnati to be in the top four, but maybe to expand the playoffs so a team like Cincinnati gets a shot. I, I can I agree with you there. I think it'd be better for the product as a whole if a team you know could get a shot. I don't think that it's. I mean, more often than not, they're going to get blown out, f- flat out. I just think. That don't that's you the remember case. the game between Georgia and Cincinnati last year? It came right down to the last second. Well, that's nice, but that was last year. Yeah, and it year. wasn't a playoff game. It was a bowl game, though. Sure. New Year's Day. But it doesn't matter. It's it, not the playoffs. Yeah, it's not the same. Yeah, mm. not the same. I think I'd like to see a couple more teams added to the playoff mix because I would like to see a team like Cincinnati, if they do go undefeated, I think they should have a shot. I mean, if you go undefeated, you win everybody, you beat everybody on your schedule, you should have a shot. Right. I'm not saying that if, even if Cincinnati gets in, I'm not saying they would win a game. Right. I put a one loss. Every team below them, though, Oklahoma, Bama, Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, Oregon, all of those with one or two losses I put ahead of Cincinnati undefeated. A two-loss team? No. Uh, Two-loss Alabama gets in over Cincinnati. 100%. Undefeated Cincinnati. Yeah. Two-loss Alabama gets in. Yep. College football playoff has not put in a two-loss team yet. I don't think they would do it. They would if it's Alabama. If it's Bama, If it's yeah. Bama, they will. <laughs> right. I don't think so. I'd, I'd almost have to agree with them. If it's yeah. Bama, they will. Because why? They it's bend Alabama. over backwards for, for Bama. Yeah, that, there, I, mean, I mean, deservedly so. Let's look yeah, deservedly so. They're look, making so, so much far. money for uh, NCAA. Alabama lost to, who did they lose to? Texas A&M. And Texas right. A&M's ranked what? 
20. Nowhere. They were ranked yeah, nothing. Were, they were unranked. Right? Oh, they unranked. were unranked. unranked. unranked they, only dropped, they only dropped the five. Mm-hmm. What was Ohio State when we lost to Oregon? Yeah. Okay. And you dropped a lot. We dropped, we dropped out of the lot. top ten. Yeah, yeah. We dropped like seven Momentarily spots. out of the top ten, yeah. Hey, we're back to six now, but we had to scratch and crawl our way all the way back to six. Right. That's the difference. The, the difference. Between, yeah. Yeah. Even a, even a team like Ohio State, which is still a premier program. Right. That lost to a ranked Oregon team. Mm-hmm. Dropped out of the top ten. Alabama lost to an unranked Texas A&M. See who they played? Right. Yeah. Only a five. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's pretty evident how, yeah. how they, the how the yeah. committee feels about Alabama. Yeah, and they two loss Alabama they're... gets in over undefeated Cincinnati. Yeah. Now that Flat you out. say it like that, I kind of see where you're going. Yeah. Not all the way. I'm not all the way there, but I I understand it. I'll go there. Yeah. Because ultimately, ultimately, it's about dollars. It's about yeah. eyes. One hundred percent. Cincinnati isn't drawing dollars. Doesn't draw an eyes. No. You're getting. The, the surrounding area of Cincinnati. If if you if you're if you put them in, if you put in Ohio State, you get the entire state of Ohio, and they're expanded alumni all across the country. Fair. One that's, of the largest alumni bases in the world. So yeah, that's valid. Yeah. Okay. So that's what they're looking at. They're looking at dollars. Yeah. They're looking at how they can get advertising dollars. They're not going to sell advertising to anyone if Cincinnati's in there. Right. Because you know what's going to happen if Cincinnati plays? Let's say Cincinnati played Alabama. Let's say that's what the oh what Alabama the would roll. But here's the deal. That those second half al- uh, advertising dollars. Win in that game. N- nobody is going to want to pay for that because everyone's going to turn the game off at halftime. Cincinnati's mm. it's a waste an of it's a waste of money for an advertiser oh, because yeah. everyone's going to be like, "This game's over. I'm done." Yep. And turn it off. And they're going to turn something else off. It's going to be bad football. I think Cincinnati could pull an upset. No. Mm. Okay, I'm trying to advocate for Cincinnati. <laughs> But even I can't say that. I don't know. I, I root for the underdogs, man. That's fine, but that doesn't mean they deserve to be in the college football playoff, a billion-dollar organization. You know, like, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. Trust me, I'm not saying... Cincinnati's fine. They're cute, okay? What? Come it's on, it's a feel-good story. It is. And trust me, I'm zero, not saying... Zero chance, to, zero chance they make it in. I'm not it's saying the Bearcats should be one or two. I'm just saying f- four. That's it. I think it's safe to say if Cincy Cincinnati will never people. win a natty. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, there we go. Oh, my God. Uh, I had to squeeze one more in before James left. That was wonderful. <laughs> that, was a, that was a fantastic one right there. That was really good. I'll give you credit. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Claw their way to a championship. Oh, oh my God. Oh, you. Good Lord. Good, good riddance. Anywho. I hope they do well. God bless them. I, it's a, it's it's great for the sport if they do, and they do pull off an upset. But honestly, I just think that they'd get blown out by any of those other teams. Sure, but I just think it would be nice to get a well, non be, right a it, non power five team in. Yeah, and somebody else other than Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Oklahoma. I want somebody new. Right, as a fan, I get it. I get it. But Again, the, this yeah, is me but, bringing my fandom into right. it. Right. It's, it's, it's a hard. business. At the end of the day, it's a business. It's hard for me to separate the two. Mm-hmm. I will admit that. We're getting up against it, but I'm going to ask you one thing. Put yourself in the shoes of the, the college football playoff committee. Okay. And you have to get as much revenue in selling advertisements. Mm-hmm. Who do you want in? Cincinnati. You do not want Cincinnati in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's be honest. Here. You don't want an Iowa. In. You right now you're rooting for Iowa to lose. Yeah. Okay. If you're if you're the college football playoff committee, benefits a team like Michigan benefits from this a lot. They, with our big huge alumni base. I, I, I hate to say it, but you're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. We, you we want, absolutely so, would be a team that they would want it, want in. What? Try C. <laughs> try C. Good old try C. Oh, God, uh, Kent State. Let's get them in. Akron. Yay. <laughs> what did you say? UMass. UMass. Oh they God. just lost. They just ended their 16, 16 game losing streak. I think it was. But uh, I don't know what it was. But just just think about it that way. It, they want to get the most money in. Uh, Iowa and Cincinnati does not help their cause. Right. They they lose money if those either one of those teams <laughs> get in. But with that, it's commercial time. When we come back, I will be gone. But uh, enjoy the rest of the show, gentlemen. Stick around, guys. Combat sports.
Would you trade $10 to get almost $10,000 in gift cards redeemable at hundreds of places around town? Of course you would. And how incredible would it be if a portion of that $10 was used to support some amazing nonprofits? Nonprofits like Awakening Angels, Beautiful Faces, Easter Seals, these nonprofits, and more. You get to save money and nurture your community. Join us today at UniteThisCity.com and embrace what makes our community different. Nurse, I need you to apply pressure to the head wound until I can get to it. I'm concerned she's lost too much blood. You in the corner, who are you? You're not supposed to be here. She's my girlfriend, doctor. You need to wait out in the waiting room. Please, doctor, I want to stay with her. Look, she's been badly injured. So if you want to do what's best for her, you need to let us do our work. Please, doctor, she has to be okay. I didn't mean to do this. I love her. Wait a second. You were the driver? Yes, but I didn't mean to. I swear, we we went to dinner. I, I was just buzzed. I only had a few drinks. Just buzzed? Why didn't you tell us that? In that case, your girlfriend is fine. Hey, sweetie. I feel great. You want to get out of here? I can't believe this. Really, doctor? She's really okay? What, are you kidding? No, not really. Nurse, get me a suture kit. Stack. Buzzed driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Buzzed driving is drunk driving. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, the Ad Council, and this station. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, in math, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And, trash. and in gym, in biology, I learned that I'm pathetic that I'm fat and a joke. And stupid. In history, today in I learned that I'm trash. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In, biology, in English, I learned that I make people sick. And, in and at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. And in, in chemistry, I learned that no one. In biology, chemistry. I learned that I'm fat and stupid. In English, and in math, I, make people I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today. The only thing I didn't learn today. The only thing I didn't learn is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. Everything's off. Right. Oh, now we're back, Sorry apparently. Uh, oh. We are back early, a little ahead of schedule. Here. Yeah, so... Uh, Want to take us back into commercial land? <laughs> I, the thing is stuck right now. It's not responding, so we're going to have... We're going to roll with it. All right. All right, then. Well, to anyone UFC, listen. Okay, now we uh, back back to commercial land. AEW, that can mean only one thing. It's time to discuss combat sports here on So What's the Catch on All Sports Clean. Oh. All right, now we got we're back. All right, now we got it. So Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder, round three. It was a pretty good fight from what I saw on the highlights. It, it was a phenomenal fight. It, it's one of the best heavyweight fights I've seen in my lifetime. You know, I've watched some older fights that you know I wasn't alive to see live. That obviously there's been some great bouts in the past, but I'd say in my lifetime, like. After the Mike Tyson era ended in the late 90s, I'd say this is the best heavyweight fight that I've seen since then. Yeah. From what I saw in the highlights, it was a phenomenal fight. I think it was Fury got knocked down twice, right? Well, he got knocked down three times, but one, oh. of them, one of them appeared to be a push. It was more of okay. a... Okay. Yeah. And then Wilder got knocked down... Ultimately four. Yeah. Yeah, the fourth one was ultimately... Cause and they ended up calling that fight before his head even hit the... <laughs> oh, before wow. his head even hit the mat. It, it was that much punishment so, that he had taken. Um, Fury came in heavier than he did in the previous two fights. Yeah. Do you think that ultimately helped him? I, I don't know how much it helped him. I don't think it hindered him in any sort of way. That's for sure. He's a bigger guy who naturally his build is not obviously as pretty and appealing as a guy like Deontay Wilder. He's a little more uh, 
rough around the edges, you know, he's a little softer. <laughs> That's the way you're saying it. Not everybody um, can look like Kramer. But in terms of <laughs> <laughs> in terms of strategy, though, you know, you could tell that he was putting all of his weight on Deontay Wilder in the clinch. He he wanted to wrap up and put all of his weight on him throughout that fight, and so having that extra weight certainly did help. It right. Helped, it helped wear down Wilder faster. You but said do I think it made him a better fighter? Not not at the end of the day. No. So I was watching like uh, YouTubers react to the fight because I, I reaction I, the, videos are fun yeah and yeah. also uh, the price on ESPN plus for the pay-per-view was $80 yeah it was ridiculous uh, no thanks I'm not paying that yeah um, a UFC pay-per-view yeah I'll pay that price because I actually enjoy watching UFC and I understand it well and you get a whole card of good fights right as opposed to one good fight right yeah. Where it's like, you know, I'm going to watch UFC 268, mm -hmm. not to diverge, because we'll come back to Wilder Fury, but I'm just saying for UFC 268, yes, I'm most excited about Usman Covington 2, mm -hmm. but the other fights on the card get me excited. Like, you got Michael Chandler against Justin Gaethje, or Rose Nama Yunus against Zhang Weili in the rematch. So, right. Good. So that... It's not too top heavy. It's a solid card through exactly. and through. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for that as well. So I'm excited to talk about that when the time comes. Sure. But uh, overall, from what I was hearing, it sounded like Wilder was going to the body early. He did, yeah. He came out. His first few punches that he threw were just straight jabs to the body. And they were... It seemed like connecting, he, right? Well, and it was working. It was a good strategy. I think there's. A, I think he won round one, in my opinion. You know, I'm not a professional scorer, but if, right. if you asked me my opinion, Deontay Wilder won the first first round for sure, hundred percent. Okay. Um, I think it, his jab looked sharp. I thought he came out with a, a different game plan, which I wanted to see from him because his game plan last time didn't work. Um, and it seemed like going to the body early was was what he was going to do, and then he diverted from that a little bit throughout the fight, and it was interesting to see him go away from what was working that early on. That but. seems to happen with a lot of fighters while they're in it. Like, it, like go back to Poirier McGregor mm -hmm. in the third fight. It seemed like Conor went away from his game plan, like, quick. Right. Now, maybe the circumstances were different because Poirier was, you know, doing tactical attacks that were you know forcing Connor to right. change his, his style yes. yeah 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 so but based on what I'm hearing from you it didn't sound like Fury was doing anything to really um make Wilder go away from his strategy am I hearing you correctly that yeah that, that's partially I'd say partially true that's some some of that is true I think that also I mean Fury's a super underrated defensive fighter I right. mean, he, he's a real big guy and he's got long reach so like people just think like oh he's tall and lanky so he keeps people at a distance but he actually has phenomenal footwork he's, he's a great defensive fighter so those jabs were really effective in the first round weren't as effective early in the second round you could tell that he he quickly made an adjustment. He switched stances, I believe. So um, did he go from orthodox to southpaw? For, for a moment, he he did, and I think that's what confused Wilder, mm -hmm. and and it, it seemed like it threw him off, and it, it just kind of changed the vibe of the fight. And then uh, F Fury became the aggressor too. He wasn't the aggressor early on. Wilder was the aggressor. He became the aggressor, and once he started to. Uh, Push the issue a little more with Wilder. That's when he stopped using that straight, so the straight right to the belly that he was using earlier. That was super effective. Um, he started getting wild. He started looking. Ah. Right, you know? No, I didn't. And, yeah. That's like your third time. I know. Pun unintended. Mike 100%. Tyson even said, uh, I guess that it was one of the most amazing fights he had ever seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just to see those two guys. I mean, when Fury got knocked down, I mean. <laughs> It's, it's unreal. Wilder's just so strong. It's incredible. I, I've never seen anyone punch with the power that that guy punches I with. think I said this bef leading up to the fight. I would say Deontay Wilder is the heavyweight equivalent of Tyron Woodley in that they both have that one arm like power bomb. Sure. I'll That's do, what I mean. Yeah. I'd go more towards Ngannou, really. Mm. But. but you, we talked about this off mic. 
You don't think Nganu would oh have a God, chance? Oh, God, don't. I can't believe you're even saying this on the show. <laughs> go on. Go ask your question. No, I'm just saying you don't think Nganu would have a chance. Finish the question. What would, what Against happened? Fury or Wilder. In a boxing match. Correct. No. Gosh, no. And I'm so disappointed that after our conversation earlier, you still <laughs> asked the question on the show. I, I just wanted to... Uh, uh, yeah. That's all. about CM Punk? No. Oh, oh, okay. CM Punk <laughs> in a boxing ring? No. The idea that, that you can beat the best heavyweight boxer in the world with no boxing training... It's just insane. It's yeah, absolutely insane. I'm That's sorry. valid. He's he's the he's proven that he's the heavyweight king right now. Nobody's out there. Nobody out there is challenging Fury at this moment. That's my. That's the only reason I would bring that up is because it's like, who is there to challenge him? That's a good question. I mean, Usyk proved you know that he's more. He's more talented than people are giving him credit for. I think in that Joshua fight, he he showed something that I didn't know that he had. So I think, obviously, he has a good argument to make. I think he deserves a title shot. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I just don't see I don't see him hanging with Tyson Fury. That's why I brought up the idea of... Of uh, some kind of different fight. Yeah. yeah. like It'd be fun. Nobody I'd, I'd watch thought, it. But. Nobody thought Floyd... And, or Connor would have a chance in hundred percent different circumstances though. In what Floyd, regard? Floyd's a retired fighter. He's retired. Not he's, when they not when he fought Connor. Yes, he was. He was retired for professional fighting. He, he was yeah. going for fifty and zero in that fight. He okay, but that was his last fight. True. He was retired before that. He he was getting his money. That was a paycheck for him. It, Tyson Fury is at the top of his game. Yeah. He just won the heavyweight championship. Yeah. It's 100% okay. different. Yep. Against, yep, 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 uh, you yep. know, and fighting a 44-year-old Floyd Mayweather who has all the money in the world and Ag just got a $100 million payday. Again, this is me going... Completely I, different. Again, I can't deny it. This is me going to, <laughs> you know, fantasy land. I love Stipe, man. I, would, I mean, I would love it for him to get that kind of payday because if he did get that matchup, which I don't think he ever will, it'd be huge. I mean, he'd make more money than he made in his entire career in the US. You don't even think he would last around though no I don't not if Tyson Fury wanted to take it seriously if if he wanted to make it watchable and entertaining sure he'd play with them for a couple rounds but if he wanted to end it in one round it wouldn't make it a full three minutes mm. okay that's just my opinion but I, I think a majority of boxing fans would agree with me. And, and the other thing is, too, is I'm a UFC fan, too. So it's yeah. not like I'm playing favorites. So, and, and vice versa. Put Tyson Fury in the ring or in the octagon with oh, one of them. Oh, Steve Bay would kill him. Oh, he'd be dead. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. So it's just the, you know, yeah. where they're at in their careers. That's why I feel like it's a little different right. than the Mayweather-McGregor again, situation. Again, this is me just yeah, yeah. being fandom. I and, can't. I can't in certain situations, <laughs> as we, as what happened in the baseball section yeah. of the show, it's hard for me to separate those two. It's hard not to with a guy like Stipe, too. He, you know, being a Cleveland guy, being he's a fireman, the, and he's just the epitome, right. the epitome of everything that this city he, stands it, for. For me... He it, he was Cleveland's first champion in 2016. Yeah. Not the Cavaliers. I agree. He it went Stipe, Monsters, Cavaliers. I disagree with the Monsters fact, but it's not professional sports, but go on. No. You will never sway me off of the Monsters in that. They are a minor league hockey team, correct? Yes. So they're not a major hockey team. Okay. They're a minor uh, league I hockey I mean, that team. is kind of the title. <laughs> <laughs> so that would make them not professional. So... Would, would you would you say the the arrows had won a championship for Cleveland if they won? No, because that's accurate. It's the same thing though. They're a minor league organization. Yeah, but the monsters play in Cleveland. <laughs> okay, if the say they're called the Cleveland Arrows oh. and they're our Double A team, and they won the Double A championship, whatever it's called, I don't even know what it's called. You wouldn't you wouldn't say that they were a champion before the Cavs. I. I'm just saying, the Cavs brought home the... <laughs> no, hear me out. The Cavs brought home the championship. Yes. I give, I'll give. i give them that. We threw a parade. Did anybody get a parade for the Monsters? Yes, yeah. they did. Uh, okay, how many people showed up? There were actually a lot of people there. A I, lot of people as opposed to a million people was a big difference, though. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? I, I'm not denying that. We did not flood the streets of Cleveland oh, over them. Cleveland brought home the... Or the, the Cavs brought home the, the major title. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big and I consider myself a big hockey fan. I have no idea who wins the Calder Cup each year. <laughs> no clue. Just not interested. That's just. That's okay. where you and I differentiate. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, that's a good thing, you know. Yeah. So I. Th- are, do we have to go into commercial land? Yeah, I think we got one more break we got to get into, and then we'll bring it back to our last segment. So everybody, stick around. We got the Kramer quiz coming up, and hockey talk. This is the sound of a flat-screen television hurled off a building. Now the new bike your kid wants. These are the things you could have all cast into oblivion. Because when you throw away money on wasted electricity, you throw away everything you could have bought with it. Use Energy Star light bulbs and appliances, and you could save hundreds of dollars a year. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. You might know me, I'm 50 Cent. You may follow my tweets, my Facebook friends. Odds are a few in six degrees separate us. We're that close. What's crazy is one in six don't know where their next meal is coming from. These are your co-workers, your neighbors, your friends. Hunger's too close for us to ignore. So visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank to see how you can make a difference. From one close friend to another, let's do this. I'm 50 Cent, and together we are Feeding America. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. And that will be a touchback. 7,000 high school students drop out every school day. If you stack their desks one atop the other, it's a pile more than 17,000 feet high. That's 12 Empire State Buildings. But what's truly scary is that another stack is going up tomorrow. We can keep students in school. Visit BoostUp.org and take the first step. Brought to you by the U.S. Army and the Ad Council. Hey, there he is. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand or what? I'm having a stroke. Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. Are you okay? I'm having a stroke. Your face looks weird, too. I'm having a stroke. Are you having a seizure or something? I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. I'm having a stroke. You just need to know the sudden signs. Look for FAST, F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. Or S, speech difficulty. Then T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Know the sudden signs. Face, arm, speech, time. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. So what's the catch on All Sports Cleveland? Trying to Stump James for over six months and failing. But hope springs eternal. It's Kramer quiz time. Here in Ukraine. All right. We <laughs> are back from commercial land, I believe. So. Unfortunately, we don't have James. Uh, let's give a quick salute to General Hockey. General, General Hockey. Hockey. All right. We're going to talk just quick hockey talk coming back from the break. Monsters do start their season this yes, year. Yes, they do. Don't they? They open their season on Friday. Okay. Against the Syracuse Crunch. The okay. AHL affiliate of the back-to-back Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay, see, that's an interesting fact. That gives this story a little bit of juice there. Tell me about the Syracuse Crunch. What did they do last season? And- uh, they Well, the Monsters did not play them last year. Right. Because normally the Monsters are in the North Division with the Belleville Senators. Affili- I'm not going to go through all the teams in the division. Thank but- you. <laughs> You're welcome. But... Normally, the Monsters are in the division with Syracuse, but because of realignment, the you know the Monsters didn't play them. These things happen in minor leagues. A lot yes. of realignment, a lot of shuffling. Yeah. Well, it was because of COVID. Right. Well, right, yeah. Yeah. So they adjusted on the fly, a lot like the NHL did last season. Right. Where they had completely right. different d- divisions and things exactly. like that. Exactly. Just okay. like how the Penguins weren't in the Metropolitan Division. I, I follow you. So yes. does that mean that the Syracuse Crunch are back in the Monsters Division? Yes. Okay, cool. So yes. So this is like a, it's kind of like a little rivalry. Yes. Okay, cool. Um. And that's Friday night? Yes. And they play again Saturday night. Are those games televised? Unfortunately, they're not. Okay, I didn't know if they maybe like Fox Sports. Occasionally, they will televise a Monsters game, mm-hmm. but not consistently. No. Okay, I love going. I went to the Monsters game when they did the. Uh, they turned the ice pink. 
for breast cancer yeah. awareness. That was so cool. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I took plenty of vitamins that day or what, 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 <laughs> what it may have been, but I just thought that was the coolest thing. I don't know. I You're really, right. I, I had a really good time seeing so, the monsters. I don't want you to get the vibe that I hate the monsters. Yeah. I don't. I'm, I just don't think that okay. they're a professional team. Okay, I get yeah, it. Yeah, I yeah. get it. But for me, the what I was trying to say in the last segment was because the monsters... So, because we don't have an NHL team, mm -hmm. and the monsters are there are de facto hockey. Teams. They since they are our de facto hockey team. For me, it counted at just per. I wish, you, I wish you would have started with that point. Yeah, because that's a very good. Yeah, point. that's so a very good point. That, that puts it in perspective. Personally, for me, yeah. it be. It's also because I was at Game Four when mm -hmm. we actually won the cup. Sure. So, so it means a little bit more to me. Yeah. Of for me. So that's why I'm saying it it counts as a professional I got you. Professional title. Yeah, I mean I'm a Pittsburgh Penguins fan and I gotta be honest, that's because Cleveland doesn't have a professional hockey team. Yeah. It's all about proximity. It was the first, it was the when I was young, the the closest NHL team to go see was the Penguins. I saw Mario Lemieux and Yarmir Yager yeah. and I fell in love. I would love to. and I'm a diehard diehard Penguins fan. Yeah. You know, Cleveland because we don't have a team. So in the early seventies Cleveland had a team, the we Barons. We did, the Barons, yeah. But for they, one year. But they went, I think it was they went bankrupt, right? Yeah, it was something that along. It was a financial thing. And they couldn't. They merged with the Minnesota North Stars correct. and became the Dallas Stars. And then the Gun family fa made up, created the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that Cleveland had a professional hockey Yeah. Team. But real quick, let's get into, uh, I mentioned the Penguins. Yes. They opened the NHL season uh, on ESPN. ESPN is the new NHL affiliate for this year. As well as TNT. Right, right, right. TNT is carrying two games tonight. It is the Rangers against the Capitals, and then it is the Blackhawks against the Colorado Avalanche. Right. Well, last night we we kicked it off on ESPN. Correct. We had the Penguins and Lightning game one. Uh, let me ask you this, Josh. Do you think that the ring ceremony, the emotion of you know them having the cup and for a, a second time, do you think that they may have just like emotionally been not into this game as much, or no. what do you think it was? Because the Tampa Bay Lightning did not look like the defending right. Stanley and Cup champions. Right, and it's so. I think this game was more about the Penguins. It was, and it shouldn't have been because we were without our three best players. Right, we were were without Crosby. No Crosby, no Malkin, no Gensel. Gen I don't know about you. who's your favorite player on the Penguins. My, I mean, Sidney Crosby is hockey Jesus, so yeah. of course he's my favorite. I like Sidney Crosby. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. there's just something about Jake Gensel that I love. I, I, it's Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I get it. I'm yeah. a, I'm a huge Gensel fan. If I I don't have any NHL jerseys, mm -hmm. I only have a Monsters jersey, mm -hmm. but I want my first NHL jersey <laughs> to be the the black Penguins jersey uh -huh. with the traditional logo, and have it say, what number is he? I think it's some. He's seventy one. Gensel? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's Malkin. Malkin's seventy one. What number? Gensel's is like fifty seven or something. Okay. Weird, yeah. That I want it simple. Yeah. I want it to be a Jake Gensel jersey. Okay, that's fair. I um. Yeah, so the Penguins won the game 6-2. to two. Another bizarre thing was uh, the coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning choosing to pull their goalie with six minutes left in the game. I have, have you ever seen that before? N not in my lifetime, no. I know that it's happened. I mean, I'm sure that there's video out there of it happening, but never during a game that I'm watching. Certainly not when it's the, the defending Stanley Cup champions back at to, home. Back to back. Back to back at home against yeah. a team that's without their three best players. Right. It, it wasn't a good look. I, it, right. I, I was real confused by the moment. I was... I did not get it. Yeah, but anyway, we we're enough talk about hockey. We don't want to. We do don't want to lose all of our viewers. Let's right. get to the Kramer quiz. Let's Everybody's do the Kramer quiz. Kramer quiz with no James this week. It, so we, we all got. have a chance now. All right. And my pen was a uh, you know, grand theft auto this morning, so I can't keep score either. Oh, that's right. You're without a pen. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna need somebody just to. Like I can do it on my phone. Just I, jot it down. I won't cheat. I mean, you're just counting like one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, it's not that hard. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's all right. We got a pen. We're back in action. Okay. Oh gosh. James. Chirk. Wait, no, there's no James. No James. Are you still with us, Chirk? Yeah, I'm still here. I haven't heard you for a minute. I'm listening. Brian. Yes. <laughs> like, wow, I'm Josh Chirk and who? 
Ryan. Okay, which team opened up the 2002 NFL season with a loss, setting an NFL record for the first team to lose 600 games? Tampa Bay. No. Uh, the Green Bay Packers? No. Chirk, you got a guess? 2002. Please oh. not be them. The Cleveland Browns. No. It was the Arizona Cardinals, interestingly oh, wow. enough. Who we placed on Sunday. Yes, mm. first team to hit 600 losses. That doesn't surprise me, but go on. Who was the first tight end in NFL history to amass 95 catches during a season? That would be the first one ever. First one ever. Give me a hint of the era. Uh, I can give you a hint of what team he's from. That's all I can do. Oakland Raiders. Okay, so it's mm. not... That mm. automatically eliminates two guys. Mm-hmm. I was thinking Antonio Gates. I, was, I don't have a guess. If it was a Raider, I don't have a guess. No. I was thinking either... Linikoff is a wide receiver, but... Yeah. I was thinking Gonzalez or Gronk, but he, they didn't play for the Raiders. Todd, I was thinking Newsom, Ozzie Newsom, but Todd Christensen. Mm. Mm. Todd Christensen. My other That's guess. That's interesting. Yeah. So not even that. Okay. Where did Dan Marino go to college? Oh. Um, I heard this. I used this. to love me some Dan Marino back in the day. I heard this the other day. I, I feel like I see him wearing an orange jersey. Yeah, I feel like I've seen him wearing orange also. That's why I'm going to guess Syracuse. Nope. Okay, then I will guess another orange team, Clemson. Nope. What you got, Chirk? I already guessed. No, you didn't. Dan Marino, where did he go to college? What did you say? Chirk, where did Dan Marino go to college? Yeah, I guess Fred. Fred. <laughs> Right. Fred, Fred is not where he went to college. <laughs> what is the answer? <laughs> Fred University. No, he went to Pittsburgh. What are you talking about, Fred? Pittsburgh, that's right. Oh, my oh God. Oh, Lord. My, yeah, my friend Dave's going to absolutely murder me for oh. that one. But Wait, what were you talking about with Fred? Isn't that interesting, though, how a guy like Dan Marino, like, we could not know? That, quite, that seems like something that we would all know right off the top. Yeah. I'm surprised none of us knew that. What? He was a wide receiver from the 70s. Uh, he was a question behind yeah. still. Anyway. In 1991, what was the farthest punt Tommy Barnhart had? In 91? Yeah, that's a random question. His that's a farthest, tough one. His farthest punt? Yeah. I'll tell you what, get it within five and I'll give it to you. 91? <laughs> no. Was, uh, no, 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 I wasn't guessing. <laughs> I was just saying, what? No, I wasn't guessing. Was it 70 yards? No, not even within five. I was, I was. Uh, okay, I got you. The longest punt that year was 35 yards. No. Dang. I'm going to say with it. 45. No, 61. Oh. 61. Okay. Has anybody West Coast, scored yet? No, they have not. The West Coast offense was developed by Bill Walsh and adopted most successfully by the Niners. Uh, but where did Walsh reside as assistant coach before advancing to head coach of the 49ers? D uh, Dallas? No. I thought he was. New England. No. Chirk? Kramer quiz is hard this week. It's because James ain't the here. Raiders. No, it was the Bengals, actually. The Bengals. Yeah, he developed a system with the Bengals and then took over in San Francisco. Good quiz. Good question. Let's keep it rolling. Which quarterback set an NFL record by being the first to have 10 300-yard passing games in one season? Oh, boy. I can give you some options on this one. Brett Favre, Rich Gannon, Dan Marino, or Drew Brees? Ooh, those I'm are... gonna go with Rich Gannon. He, had, I you remember, are correct. He had a 4,000 plus yard season for the Raiders when they played. And the, that was the year. That was the year. Okay, cool. 2002 with the Raiders. All right, I think that puts me in the lead. And, and it does with a big old one. <laughs> with a one zero zero. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Who set not only a Monday Night Football record but tied the NFL record in 1996 for kicking seven field goals in one game? Oh. 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 No, it was not Martin him. Martin Gramatica? No. Morton Anderson? No. Mm. He was a Dallas Cowboy. Oh, well then. I don't, I don't know. Chris Boniel? B-O-N-I-O-L. 
We'll go with that. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Yeah, sorry if you're listening, Chris. Boneal. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, um, let's go to welcome to the NFL. Welcome. Which of the following teams did not get a very good welcome by winning only one game in their first season? Ooh, is it only one? We're, you're looking for one answer or multiple? Well, I'm going to give you four options. Okay. Falcons, Packers, Giants, or Rams? Which team only won one game Which in their first season? Only won one game in their first season. And the options again were Falcons, Packers, Giant, Rams. Is this Super Bowl era or pre Super Bowl? Pre Super Bowl. I'm Ooh. gonna say the Packers. It is not. Dang. I'm gonna say the Rams. It is the Rams. Ah. Because they were in Cleveland at the time. That's right. That is right. Touche. Good question. How many t- one one. It's one one. And Chark, uh, are you still with us? Yep. He's, okay. He'll, he'll come in somewhere. Okay. He'll get one. How many 2009 NFL teams began the season in a new home stadium? Two thousand Dallas Cowboys. How many? Oh, all right. How many? Two. No. Did you have a guess, Chark? Two. No. <laughs> he just. <laughs> he just <laughs> Dude, you just could have guessed any other number in the world. All right. So that just leaves me. I'm going <laughs> to. That was awesome. <laughs> that was fantastic. Moment of the show right it was, there. It was. I'm going to say what? I'm going to go with five. It's one. One. Just one. It was the Cowboys, too. It was the wasn't Cowboys. It? That's why I was like, true, yeah, just say on. one. <laughs> I thought the uh, Cardinals did for some reason. For some reason, I thought like the Giants. Open the new thinking, season that year. Yeah, I was thinking the Cowboys and the Cardinals were the same year, but they weren't. In the 97 draft, four players from Florida State were selected in the first round of the draft. Of those four, who was the third player selected? Oh, God. In what year? 97. I didn't. That was the year I was born. So. I'll give you a little bit of a clue. It was a Florida State running back. Oh, man. Kurt Enos. No. I'm going to just back out of this one. Mm, 97. Because that was the year I was born, so I went no. It was a Florida State running back who was drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Warwick Dunn. Yes, but you already answered, so. Uh, Warwick Dunn. Warwick Dunn. That makes me the one. <laughs> <laughs> and it is 4 o'clock. So Brian officially has won himself a round. Hey, Chirk, you get an assist on that. You get a half win. Chirk, you got any berserkers for us before we leave? Yes, the berserker of the week. I'm giving it to Ben Simmons for going back in that Philadelphia locker room. Oh, okay. All right, go uh, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the outro today. So All right, on. Oh, new go. outro. Everybody stick around. You're going to want to hear this. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of So What's the Catch? Join us next week for more hot takes and very interesting conversation, to say the least. Uh, so, yeah, follow us on our, our social media platforms. And, uh, yeah, go Brownies. Here in Euclid, from the Euclid Community Stadium, St. Edward Eagles on top of the Menor Cardinals in this one, 10 to 7. Jared Andrews, Mac Robinson on the call. And Mac, it's really been a tale of how teams like to do it. Uh, these teams like to run the ball, both of them, but the two touchdowns scored in this game through the air. Yeah, and you've actually seen a little bit of, uh, you've seen a little bit more going on the ground so far this in this game. Obviously, you have 89 yards total going for Menor, and then you have 110 on the other side. But like you mentioned, I mean, they were still able to get. Uh, they were able to get their touchdowns through the air. Six completions for Ian kept 69 yards and a touchdown. Nice. Nice. Um, and meanwhile, you've got Garrett DeZuro as well as Connor O'Malley combining for 103 yards through the air, obviously getting the touchdown for, De- for DeZuro to Mackenzie Wainwright, who's really been targeted heavily as he's had seven targets, five receptions. And remember, follow All Sports Cleveland on Twitter and Instagram right now at all sports underscore CLE for the latest news and notes from your favorite all sports Cleveland talent and Cleveland sports news. And remember that's on Twitter and Instagram at all sports underscore C L E the men are Cardinals set to receive. They did defer in the first half, so they will have the ball to start and a missed field goal from Connor McIntosh from 42 yards out with a chance to tie the game going into half a little short, no good. And that's where we stand right now, Mac 10 to seven. 
And both of these running backs really not having dominant games like we've seen from them in the past, but the quarterbacks picking it up for them on the ground. Yeah, you've seen Garrett Zero get 30 yards, obviously at a long of 14, but he's been able to get a good amount of gains here as well. Jordan Castleberry has been the story of this game, in my opinion, because Castleberry has been the one that really has opened up a lot of things where Noah Potter is now focused more so on Castleberry than on the quarterback, I feel. He's been able to go a little bit more upfield, which has opened the hole for Zero to gain some yards. And we've seen pretty much all season long that Ben don't break a defense from Menner. They'll give you, they'll give up some yards, but they're not going to give up points. And right now they find themselves trailing 10 to 7. They're giving up those quick little screen passes outside to Wainwright. Do you think they start to take those away or do you think they stay the course here? I think they say the course with this pretty much because obviously it's at Bennett, but don't break type defense. But the other thing that you got to keep in mind is that for the offense, they going into or after the first quarter, they had 31 yards here at the half, 153. They were able to get the offense going right. And now you're starting to see what Menner is able to do here on offense. If they're able to continue this and mind you, it was 14 all going into half in week one final score. 42 to 39. Yeah, and you know, we've seen the top taking taken off so far uh, in that second quarter for uh, Menor. Luke Floria, after a couple drops earlier in the game, an over-the-shoulder basket catch on a throw from Ian Kipp for 30 yards, um, and that really set up the score. And without that, Mac, this might be a dominant first half for St. Ed's, but that touchdown from Kipp to Floria makes it a little closer, and now Menner has a chance to either tie or take the lead on this impending kickoff. And not only that, too, Menner has had a few missed opportunities, like you mentioned. There were a couple missed opportunities of Mason Trubisky going down the seam. He had a few times where he could have had a touchdown, as well as Floria, in addition to his one that he had. So, really, this could have gone either way. This could either be a very dominant game by Menner if they're able to capitalize, or a very dominant game by St. Ed's if they're able to shut down that pass to Floria. And getting ready to kick it away are the Eagles. Back deep, Gallo and Floria both inside their own five. Ed's kicking from right to left, wearing their white uniforms with green numbers and, excuse me, a yellow trim around those numbers. Yellow pants with white and green stripes going down those pants. Yellow helmets with white and green stripe down the center. And for men, they're all red uniforms with gray numbers, gray helmets, and white trim on the jerseys. And Swan kicks this one away, and it is going to go to Floria. And it's going to be short, actually, caught by an up man across the 25 and down to the 28. And that is where Menner will take over, down 10 to 7. Yeah, you saw him try to get a little bit of room, try to make some, try to get some speed going up the front, and was able to get a couple of yards. Not necessarily anything great, but they're going to go and take over. It looks like they're going to be at the 29-yard line, and that is where Ian Kip will lead his team. And the sleeves are off for Ian Kip. The sun is not out, but the guns are for the <laughs> sophomore as he ditches the white long sleeves and will lead his Cardinals back onto the field. Trips out to the right. Vernon Gallo and Floria and Trubisky is alone far side to the left Trobel in the game to the right of Kip in the shotgun and it's Trobel off that left side Trobel is smashed in the backfield what a hit made on that play T on Smith Tion Smith is one of those guys who he's a captain on this team and he made a huge play coming off the edge big hit on Brian Trobel Trobel loses two yards. They're going to get call it three yards now on that play. Second down and 13. Twins on the left and on the right. From left to right, attacking here are the Cardinals. Ball on the left hash. Kip, back to pass. Steps up in the pocket. He's under pressure. Now he's going to run. He's got some room on the left side. Across the 30 and knocked out of bounds just past the 30 to the 31. Four yards on the scramble. That'll set up a second down and eight. Or third down and eight, excuse me. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to be a little bit more manageable for this offense. So it's going to be interesting to see if they're able